again, if we could have silence in the room, thank I would appreciate it very much. We have a full agenda tonight. Thank you. And a question for um, Channel 22. Are we are we live right now? We are live. So everything was able to be fixed before we started. Well then, to everyone at home, thank you for joining us. We are about 10 minutes late in starting, but we have quite a few people here tonight and quite a few changes at the last minute. So we want to make sure we get off on the right track. Um, thank you for joining us this evening. This will be the final um, review of both um, the municipal warrant articles um, and the private petition warrant articles, as well as the public hearing this evening for both the town and the schools. Before we start the meeting, if everyone would rise so we can pledge allegiance to the flag. Over there. Right. Yeah, right. And the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's the second time tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and then, briefly, if we could just start at the far end of the table with you, Mr. Lett, and everyone introduce themselves up here. Bob Ladd. Jim Waddell. Jim O'Loughlin. There's an R here. Brian Lapham. Sonny Kravitz. Joan Rice, Secretary. Eileen Latimer, Chairman. Mike Cliff, Vice Chairman. Stephen LeBranch. Richard Rainier. Glenn Farrell. Joan. Thank you. Joe Kowalski. Thank you, everyone. For those who have been here year after year um, for the public hearing, tonight is a little bit different. We had quite a few Warren articles, and we have a few um, tonight that um, we will need to review before we go into the public hearing. I would ask those representing the Warren articles as they come up to have one representative for the Warren articles that have not already been submitted to the Budget Committee. That is not to say that everyone will not get a chance I would want to just divide it up in two sections. We need to finish our work on the outstanding Warren articles that the Budget Committee has not voted yet to either recommend or not recommend. However, when we do go into public session, that will be quite different. Every resident in Hampton will be able to speak to those Warren articles. We'll run through them all again from the beginning. So you will, if you've come here tonight, to speak to a Warren article in public hearing, you will absolutely get that opportunity to do that. But if you bear with us while we just finish up some work from the Warren articles that have not made it before us yet, and it has to do with deadlines, this is still poetry in motion here. So with that being said, um, we'll go on to them. I'm going to ask Fred. Fred, are there any new town warrant articles in this revised list tonight? All 49 of them. We have eight. We have eight money. We're going to have to continue with starting with, starting sure. with number 38 right. on page 18 of 24. And everything before then is done. And this is a new list for us tonight. So. All right. Well, we're going to start with Article 38, the No Pond Dam. And do we have someone to represent that Warren article? Okay. If you would come up and join us. 
at the speaker podium. And if I could ask you um, to read that Warren article for us, and I'm sure that way we'll get the spirit of the Warren article. And I'm sorry, when each of you come <coughs> up to do your Warren article, could you please state your name? My name is uh, Norman Hurley. And your address, Norman, I'm sorry. 472 High Street, Hampton. Thank you very much. Article 38, Mill Pond Petition. On petition of Norman R. Hurley and 200 registered voters to see if the town will vote to, re to rescind the $400,000 from the non-lapsing fund created by Article 15 of the 2014 town meeting and to further raise and appropriate the sum of $650,000 for the purpose of repairing and or rebuilding the Grist Mill Dam, also known as Mill Pond Dam. 400000 of this month of this amount to come from the town's unassigned fund balance and 250000 from the taxation for 2015 only. Additionally, to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, accept, and expend for said purposes any funds from the State of New Hampshire, the Federal Government, in private source as it may become available, uh, which funds shall reduce the amount to be raised by the taxation. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 327 uh, colon 7 section 6. Um, this is uh, and will not lapse until repair or rebuilding of the Gristmill Pond is completed or until March 31st 2019 whichever is sooner. The repair will be done in compliance with the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services letter of deficiency dated July 11, 2012. If this article passes, it will save a 328-year-old town dam, pond, and freshwater habitat and increase the flood control for the town of Hampton. I believe when we submitted it, it also had a tax implication uh, amount on it. Not see that here. So next page. Oh, oh, Point, nine page. for file. Next page. Oh, the, oh, the oh, it's on the next page. Yeah. Oh, Sorry. Page nineteen. Oh, okay. 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 Fiscal note was submitted with a warrant article. Fiscal note um, from the Finance Department estimated 2015 tax impact on $250,000 is 0.09 per 1,000, 9.0 cents per 1,000 valuation. So to speak to the warrant article, last year Article 15 uh, was proposed by the selectmen to decommission the dam. I had uh, gone to a public hearing, I'm sorry, a meeting, uh, I believe it was back in September or October of 2014, where Stevens had re uh, presented a report about the five or six options they could do to either repair or remove the dam to meet the deficiency letter of the state of New Hampshire. Uh, this deficiency letter apparently said that it was going to be approximately a $2,000 a day fine if we did not uh, repair or remove the dam because of the uh, amount of danger that, that uh, the dam posed for the uh, town. At that meeting, several residents, including myself, got up and spoke. Uh, it was the first time we had seen the Stevens report, so it was the first chance we got to react to it. Several residents spoke very intelligently about different options and different things that could happen. We had asked the selectmen to put together, allow to put together a public hearing so we could further review this and go further with this to try and figure out what the best option for the town was. At that meeting, the selectmen voted to go ahead with a public hearing at another date and to send a letter requesting the state to give us another year to get together a plan for this. Well, subsequently, about three weeks later, I'm announced to myself or many of the other residents that had attended, the selectmen changed their vote and voted to put together the Warren article that you saw last year. 
um, leaving us very little time to get together and, and react to this, uh, to put our group together to figure out what the best option was. So subsequently this year we had sent a letter to the current Board of Selectmen requesting to have a public hearing so we could discuss this again. Uh, knowing full well that the town had passed uh, by a majority vote, Article 14. But we also knew that it was going to take quite some time in order for that whole process to take place. The current board off, uh, uh, agreed to give us a public hearing. Over 50 residents spoke at the public hearing. Um, it was a very well-run public hearing, and the majority of the residents there requested <coughs> to change the ideas from repair, uh, from remove to repair, or decommission to repair. Now, decommissioning the dam at, at um, Mill Pond Dam is a significant undertaking, as well as repairing it's going to be a significant undertaking. But some of the things that will happen is, and we've gone through this by, we went through, we agreed, we've met with several different community members, including the DPW, the Board of Selectmen, the town manager, members from the planning board, members from the conservation, members from the Army Corps of Engineers. We've, met, we've had state representatives come down and speak to us. We've had the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services come speak to us. We've spent many, many days and nights on the phones with some of these people picking their brain, trying to come up with the best reasons and the reasons why we should change this. I will tell you that if you decommission the dam, according to the Siemens report, you will cut like a half pipe into underneath that existing building now, and that half pipe will run all the way back into the middle of the pond area to where the river, or the Niles River uh, brook comes out now. So it will come back, it will be a very large half pipe, because if you read the Stevens report, it has to be significant enough in order to hold all the water that will come in a 100-year storm. That is approximately, according to the report, 232 cubic feet per second on a 100-year storm if the dam is decommissioned. If the dam is repaired, what we'll do is we'll give the town significantly more flood control than it has now. It will significantly reduce the amount of cubic feet per second that will flow into that area. Currently, under current uh, configuration, where the dam is in the re disrepair that it's in now, at the height of a 100-year storm, it will be up approximately 156 cubic feet per second flowing underneath that uh, grist mill as it stands now. You, again, you will increase that to 232 if you do the decommissioning. The building itself, which the town has taken pretty much has taken ownership of and has spent significant money repairing and maintaining, or at least to the degree it is, it was not designed to really even take the 156 cubic feet per second, but it's certainly not designed to, ca to carry 232 cubic feet per second hitting, hitting the, the underment of that or the foundation of, of the gristmill building. So subsequently, repairing it would reduce the cubic feet per second to somewhere around 136 cubic feet per second in the height of a major storm or the height of a 100-year storm. And it would allow you to, to release water if you knew the 100-year storm was prior to the storm coming in, it would give you significantly more flood control than what you currently have now. One of the major concerns in the deficiency letter from the state of New Hampshire is the potential of washing out not only 490 High Street, which is the yellow uh, house right at the end of, uh, right by the, uh, the Grismill Pond, but also wiping out or running, uh, washing out High Street itself. Under the decommissioning, it is also stated in the Stevens report that you will see an increase of water flow over High Street if you decommission at the height of the storm. Because it's not designed, even, that, even in the decommissioning, it is not designed to be able to hold all the water of a 100-year storm. So not only will you get a much higher flow rate, you'll get an increased amount over High Street, which potentially would wash out High Street. It is not like the flooding that happens down below. Flooding down below is a passive upcoming of the, of the tides when, the, when there's an oversight, you know, a very high tide and the water rises up on the road. It is a 232 cubic feet per second of water rushing underneath that high street. High street itself is a major evacuation route for storms and the Seabrook nuclear power plant, and you have still have the potential of washing it out. I don't see where decommissioning, even in the Stevens report, 
would help the situation much. Also, what you do if you decommission is you'll take the pond and you'll dry it up completely. Literally, the cubic feet per second during normal times would drop that down to approximately one to two cubic feet per second during the day on a normal day without heavy rains. So what you see now is a cascading, rolling, uh, very nice looking pot coming underneath the uh, building. What you'll see in the future if you decommission is a major washout or a major half pipe going all the way, running all the way back from the street because you have to also widen it out up to the street, from the street all the way back to where the middle of the pond is now. It is a major impact on the area. It's a major impact on our wetlands. It's one of the largest freshwater wetlands in the, in the town. It is still used quite often and, and as, as this weekend showed, people are skating out on that pond, people are using that pond. The area is full of waterfowl. There's a, there is just a number of things that are still going on. It's a major conservation area. It takes the watershed of the mill pond and that whole area is a, is a major watershed for a, a lot of different communities in different parts of town. I've heard a few things. I've heard a few things. It's also, just you know, it, the town voted in 1686 to give the permission to build that dam. It was built within two years. So that's a 328 year old dam. Some people say it's not historic. I think that's pretty historic in my opinion. Okay? It's a very big piece of history in this town. There were 26 different grist mills in the seacoast area. It is the last remaining grist mill in the seacoast area. It's a major part of, <coughs> excuse me, it's a major part of the town of Hampton, although I know and we'd love to see it be more recognized and be more open to the public, by all means, we'd love to find a way to do that. And we're certainly looking for that. I've heard some stuff that, that, it, that it, if we redam it, it will cause back flooding uh, way up back. The truth of the matter is, the fact is, if you read up about Phragmites, Phragmites and the fact that we've let the dam down and the water down, the Phragmites to grow in, which is growing in off the North Shore roadside, actually causes the flooding, the back flooding, because the dam is not there. Not because the dam was there, it's because the dam's not there. When you open, when you create the water, the Phragmites actually goes back and it creates, Phragmites will cause the water to flood, back flood. Okay, and that's what you got going on back flooding. It's not from the dam, it's from not having a dam. I have, I, I have reports here which I'd be more than happy to give out that I'll show you about Phragmites and what Phragmites does. And Phragmites is coming in a very strong, area, strong way on the north shore side of Mill Pond now. So that being said, we also believe that if you repair the dam, the cost of repairing the culverts would be reduced significantly because the reduction in the cubic feet per second that goes under High Street if the dam is repaired versus if it's decommissioned is significant. There's already an existing uh, square pot that has two smaller culverts running through it. That existing, I believe, could remain and the culverts could be repaired at a much cheaper cost to the town. Further saving, and I know, I, I'm well aware that this is an expense on the town. It is not something that I'd like to see. That I'm not looking just to the town to spend money, but I think it's the best bet and the best bang for the dollar. I think it's a much better idea of spending $400,000 on just decommissioning, ruining a 328-year-old uh, piece, ruining a, uh, a significant habitat, freshwater habitat, and changing significantly you know, the, the flood controls or, uh, or actually completely removing flood controls from what you would have if you de if you uh, repaired, and obviously removing any historic, any educational, or any recreational use of that area. So that being said, I'm, I'm more than willing to answer anybody's questions, um, debate out what you want. Uh, I am I am I am asking you to support the expenditure expenditure in this warrant article, and actually support the town. I think it's a better deal for the town. I think it's much wiser dollars spent than just decommissioning. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to, don't go away. I'm going I'm to go around the table and ask everyone if they have any questions. Bob, starting with you. I have no questions. I think you did an excellent job of explaining it. Jim? I'll be brief. Uh, 
as selectman i supported you coming back to the petition article because i think the process was done improperly last year you didn't get your public hearing the town didn't have the opportunity to make the decision on whether to decommission or to rebuild and i think for those reasons they at least should give a look at it and make their own mind up on which way they want to go with two options so i support it i, th I think you answered everything i think it was a good report thanks i have questions sir uh, how hard is the uh, 650 figure um according to the Sievers report that's a very high figure it's a high hard is it a hard estimate uh it's a it's an estimate pulled right from the Stevens report which is the report the town commissioned to have done we didn't change and we agreed that we would accept the Stevens report and the, and the number of uh, options they had we drew the option we felt was best for the town out of that and that's the the dollar figure we use if you read the Stevens report it states that it uh that is a high estimate the uh total estimate i believe was uh expected estimate was somewhere around 470 to 500,000 although the high estimate was 650. okay thank you how big is the, how, how big is the diameter of the pipe that you're talking about 230 feet per second uh i, I believe i believe the uh, i will tell you that i'm not complete but i believe it's around 10 feet uh, 10 feet in diameter that, that they would go diameter. through underneath the, the building. You think? Uh, what happens to the $400,000 that the people voted on last year? The $400,000 goes to the fund balance if this warrant article is, and then the money of that $400,000 would be added to the two hundred fifty dollars raised by taxation and and would become the six hundred and fifty. dollars So the, so the $400,000 would, would be utilized out of... Uh, it would go to the undesignated fund balance from which we would draw... That's correct. Fred? No. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, now, to really make this body of water a mitigation factor, wouldn't we have to dredge it? And wouldn't that cost millions? Um, I, I don't believe that. I, I, I believe the dredging thing is a whole is a whole different issue. Yeah. I really do. I believe it's a whole different issue. Um, and I believe, quite honestly, one of the problems we have is because and again, I, I, I'll apologize to everybody. I'm, I'm a newer member of the town of Hampton for about four and a half years. But in 2006, which was the, uh, uh, the Mother's Day storm, I believe it was, they removed some stones, removed some stuff, and the water, water levels dropped. Part of what happened when you do that is you allow, you allow weeds and, and growth in the fragmentaries yeah. to grow in, okay? And it creates, it creates more of a problem than, than basically the dam what itself. You've got silt and vegetation. I, but again, that is not, in all honesty, that, that, even under the report, which I've stated, we didn't have, there's nowhere in the report does it tell us that we have to, although I will say, in the decommissioning, you have to dredge back to the, original, to, you'll have to dredge back to the original, to the, uh, original um, river, or the little uh, brook that goes down through there. That's part of the requirement. But I mean, how deep is this pond in the middle, let's it, say? It, it, prior to 2006, or actually at the, deepest uh, time it was about 12 feet deep I think right now it's considerably less than that for me to believe we would have water uh, flood mitigation I would think we would have to dredge this to get the silt and vegetation out of there to really give us a capacity to hold that water back and release it in a controlled fashion I think well uh, under the Stevens report currently if you repair it it estimates that you will build it up at least another foot higher than what it is currently okay so that would certainly give you more uh water capacity to hold right now as it is okay and obviously i, I think over time you're right i think there i think there are some issues there's no doubt about it in my mind part of the problem has been all along is that some stuff has to you have to maintain uh, you know, the dam or other things like this it is re, you know in order for things to to work properly and subsequently one of the biggest problems was the town didn't maintain it there are letters going back as far as 40 years from the state saying that we have to do something about this and, and nothing was done so if we decommissioned the dam would that leave just a, a brook running through it would it would leave a uh, it, would, it would leave a brook through basically and an, a half pipe river, going through underneath the building. No, no and, and you'd still have to increase the size of the uh the um culverts going under the road yeah okay i uh I'd have to reacquaint myself with this Stevens report because it's it's a couple of years. I don't want the data that was Keith Keith is here, but I'd have to I'd have to review that, take a look hard look at that Stevens report. And uh, do you have a report as well or at all? 
I, I believe the Stevens report is online oh, for yeah. the town of Hampton. Um, my, I, I could be wrong in that. I believe it's online in the town of Hampton. Yeah, so the Stevens report is online. You can get it. And do you have a report that that is equal to or better than or whatever? No, no, we use the Stevens report. That the was the one the town paid for. I got you. I'm done. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I have in my records, it's been 15 years since we've done anything with that dam, as far as the town goes. Um, one problem I have is what about the cement blocks that we have to use, according to the state, to redo the dam, on top of which we have to have a release mechanism. Well, is this all figured into this? I, again, in the repair of the of the Stevens report, all of that would be put into place. I mean, certainly you have to have a ability to rise and uh, raise and lower the water. I mean, you, you cannot just build a dam that has no has no uh, controls on it. So the controls would have to be put in there. And you get the blocks are going to have to be moved to two places. They first have to go through the DPW, then they have to go there. I can't speak for that. I really don't know. That. Okay. Um, I see that being a because of the that I believe that is in the Stevens plan, and I see that as a big problem. Um, from what I understand, too, um, the way that we voted on it last year was going to work. I don't have a plan. I don't have anything that tells me that decommitment that. Re redoing the dam is going to meet this price. What you had last year was from the same report you're getting this year on, on the on exact yeah, same it's report. Just a different version. It's the exact same report. It's just a different. There were, I believe, five to six different or seven different options listed in that report. This just happens to be one. Decommissioning was one option. Yes. This is, happens to be one of the other options in it. Um, that's all I have. I've got a couple of questions. Phlegmites. I saw a study in Massachusetts. The roots grow horizontally and they compact the soil. They destroy the effect of a tidal marsh. It would seem to me the obvious thing to do is to have the DPW dig out the phlegmites and that would increase your flow. You still have the issue of high street. Phlegmites. Phlegmites. You still have the issue that has to have a, a larger pipe under it, okay? Now, it seems to me that you could solve a lot of the problems, and I suspect you could probably bring it in at 400000 that's in the reserve if you moved in that direction. I mean, the big problem is the state is threatening to penalize the town unless they resolve the issue. I, I personally agree, you know, you've got a 300 year dam, you, you want to preserve it. You know. But I mean, it seems to me the first step is to, to remove the, to increase the, the flow to the tidal marsh so that it doesn't get back up on High Street and cause the overflow. Uh, um. The removal of Phragmites, which would be, again, right now it's mostly grown in the uh, northwestern section of, of the uh, Mill Pond area, um, I would suspect is a very expensive detail, okay? Um, but I also believe that that has more to do with the back flooding beyond the North Shore Road and the, and the neighborhoods back there than the dam itself. They, again, if you look, if you read reports on Phragmites, what it basically says is that in fact, there's a report out of one in New York, it's almost exactly the same, where they lowered the water and the Phragmites grew in, and then they had massive floodings in the back, uh, back fields because the Phragmites wants to push the water to where it wants it to go, and that's exactly what happens. But Phragmites in, in the repair of the dam are two separate things. The repair of the dam is, is required, or, or decommissioning of the dam is required by the state of New Hampshire because it's in disrepair. 
It was moved to a uh, high risk dam, I believe in 2011, and uh, from, from a low risk dam in two, uh, prior to that. And that was because the federal government came out with new standards as to how they judge a high risk versus a low risk dam, and they moved Hampton to a high risk. Uh, not a lot has really changed from 2011 to now, other than the fact that they still want to remove it, and they've been telling us that for years. Um, regardless of what we do with the Fragmites, they're going to tell us we have to do something with the dam. Anybody else? How much of this information was in known, or how much new information has become known? Since this went on the warrant last year? Well, Probably the biggest thing that came out of that was us doing a lot of study on what was in the Stevens report to find out why, what, what we felt was a better deal. Well, obviously, and, and I'll state clearly for me, I sat, the first thing I looked at was the 300. A 28-year-old piece of property that I thought was going to have some devastating effect on. But when we dug into it, we had one of our guys who sat on our board who was an engineer, be it a mechanical engineer, he was able to read a lot of the, he would be able to carry a lot of the details into, well, what, he was not a civil engineer, but he was a, uh, a lot of the details and, and carry some of this forward. From that, just from the report, he was able to pull a lot of your cubic feet per seconds out. He was, you know, the difference, to, I will tell you that probably the biggest significant difference I saw after I, and I learned this, I will be truthful, I learned this well after the town meeting, okay, mm -hmm. was 232 cubic feet per second going into the bottom of that gristmill foundation versus 136 is incredible. That's an incredible difference. Mm -hmm. and, and that in itself would tell you that, you know, that you have the potential of truly wiping out the building itself. Never mind, never mind just the building, but you also have the potential of wiping out the road. So. Those are issues that, uh, that, that came up from us doing studies afterwards. We've met, again, we've met with a, a number of members. We've had a number of members meeting with us um, that came down from the state, from the, from the Department of the Dam Bureau, the New Hampshire uh, Department of Environmental Services. We went up and met with the historic people because there's a significant question about whether it's historic or not historic. It has not been placed on the National Registry of Historic Places. It has not, um, it hasn't, the forms have not been completed because they require us to do a complete land survey, uh, which would have to happen whether we decommission it or repair it, by the way. You still have to do a survey to make sure you, you're within your property bounds and, and whose property you're working off. So that still would remain to be done. Because of that issue, the Army Corps of Engineers says, I can't tell you whether we are going to require what's called a Section 106, and you may have heard me speak on different meetings about Section 106. Section 106 requires us to do a much more intensive study as to the historic value of that piece of property. Right now, I can't tell you that's required, okay? But I can tell you that if it goes on the National Registry or goes on the list to be eligible for National Registry, it will be required likely by the Army Corps of Engineers, which is the federal government. Um, so, so those are a number of things. I thought 
it was already required because I thought, you know, 328 years old, of course it's historic. Okay, but it's not listed that way, so I can't give you that answer. So that was a, that was a some lessons. But there's a lot of lessons that were learned since since the town meeting well, that we didn't know, which we would have had a chance to at least explore beforehand. In the if category, if it does go on the register, it does it ties our hands as all things historic does in one correct. one sense of the word? Would it also bring funding with it? Uh, Currently, we have not seen any funding with pretty much for our national historic stuff. Funding, obviously, in, uh, I'm no different than anybody else. I know how economies work. The funding kind of dried up a number of years ago, and, and things are starting to get built back in, but I don't see any funding um, right now. I'm just trying to consider yeah, all we, options. Truly, we, we, we've asked every place we've gone. Because we've met with state representatives. We've, met, we've, we've talked to senators, U.S. senators and state senators on this issue, trying to see if there's any place we can find funding to, to reduce the impact on the, on the taxpayers at Hampton. Listening to you, Mr. Hurley, on this issue, I'm also hearing that restoring the dam, repairing the dam, I guess is the proper word, will create a situation for us into the future where we will have to then maintain that mm -hmm. dam. And I'm hearing that I'm, I'm guessing gates or something will go in there. there there's, there's a, I, I believe it's a lift or a lower gate okay. in there, correct. And who would control that? The, the or town how would it be that. controlled? The town, right. meaning DPW. Correct. Would now, in the Stevens report, it lists out approximately six to $7,000 per year. I will tell you that talking to Jim Gallagher of the state, they maintain several, actually, I think they told me around 300 dams some large, some small across the state, and the small ones generally don't go over $1,000 a year for maintaining. The, the equipment itself. That's but correct. But then again, there'll maintaining be manpower the too. And as far as, I'm, I just want to wrap my head around, we keep something, we also need to keep a program for it in the future to keep it in, in, in a good state of repair so that it is useful. That's correct. The Phragmites will continue to expand themselves. So I'm guessing that at some point they will have to be dealt with as well. That's correct, but, but actually up water or raising the water level will actually slow the Phragmites down considerably. But and it won't fact, remove them. Huh? It won't remove them. It will not and remove them. I understand continue. that. But, it, but, but again, allowing to grow more is going to create more problem. And the lower the water is, the faster they'll grow in. But then we get into a catch-22, I suppose, where if we Lower the water to control the flooding. The backlands. No, is just the opposite. Not? What ends up happening is, in fact, one of the things is you read, if you read a report on Phragmites, it tells you the way to control Phragmites is to lower the water periodically, then raise it back up. Okay, and generally the only time you lower water in a dam situation like that is if there's going to be intense flooding. You know, if you know a storm, you know, a Mother's Day storm is coming up the coast, and with today's technology, we get a much better. Uh, uh, knowledge of when this stuff is coming into our area, you could lower the dam 24 hours pr prior and allow allow the reservoir to fill back up during the storm. Thank you. You pose a dilemma for us. Thank you. All right. Uh, the property, residential property, that's on Bill Pond Lane, that abuts the bill. I'm sorry. The prop residential property, the house. That 490 High Street, I believe, is that, the. That's on Bill Pond Lane that, that uh, abuts the dam. Right. That was in the report there a couple of years ago. Uh, and there was discussion about taking that property. Is the spillway going there or has it been moved? It, it does not. If the, if the repair that we've cited in the book is not part of doing anything with that property at all. I mean, there will be some. There may have to be some reconstruction around that property, as far as uh, you know. Behind it. Behind it. Yeah. Okay. But it, um, part of one of the plans was to take the whole house itself and buy the house out and raise the house. Right. We did not choose that one because it, it adds another four hundred thousand dollars to the bill, and <laughs> I'm having a hard time adding two hundred and fifty to it. So. I realize that. I just was curious as to whether the state. You know, one of the options was that that to take that property out of there. No, no. In fact, and we talked to the to the owner of that property several times. 
be more than happy to sell it to us, right. but I'm, you know, but that, again, not well, I, just, not I wonder what the status of it was. Thank you. <clears throat> Back when you, um, in your committee, visited with the selectmen, and you publicly announced that if anybody would like to come and ask questions and take a look at the dam, and you'd explain it further. So um, this past summer, I actually visited the old grist mill. Now, drove by it a thousand times, but never got out of the car. It looks nice from the street. So I walked over there, and the people that live in the, Victor the, the big Victorian house that's right next to it, they actually used to own that piece of land. Right, okay. so nice. And back in 62, they sold it to the town. Just a little small piece that the, the grist mill is on, so of course they, didn't, they no longer had the liability of the dam. Now, the, I think it should be said for the record that first of all, um, that building, the old grist mill, is not the old grist mill. That's a reproduction of the old grist mill. The building that's there presently, let me finish, mm -hmm. was built by the same guy that built the casino back in 1890, okay? That was never the, the original grist mill. So that's not a historical building, um, except that it was built and, you know, when the casino was built, I guess you could call that historical or something. It's a replica of the old grist mill, okay? Now, the dam itself, I was amazed when I saw this. First of all, <clears throat> the owner explained to me that there are eight acres, there were eight acres of water, <clears throat> 10 feet deep. That's a lot of water, and that's a lot of water pressure. Now, the dam itself that you can see, I didn't walk around the entire lake, but the dam that you can see right there at the grist mill is an earthen dam, okay? It's a, it's a pile of dirt with some rocks in it. And what happened over the years is the trees grew, the roots grew through it, and the, the dam became a sieve. And that's why the state wanted something done with it, because it was leaking all over the place. And the, at some point during that Mother's Day storm a few years ago, the dam was going to breach it was going to, there was going to be a big problem. So this town went up there with a backhoe and removed the, the sluice gate, I'm going to call it. Okay. And so now it's a babbling brook. You have, I, I got up on the dam and I looked over the top. It's a big meadow full of um, uh, cat and nine tails. It's basically a meadow that's going back to nature. Okay, and with a stream going down through the middle of it. The little babbling brook that goes underneath the grist mill is actually, it sounds nice. It's, I'd like to live next door. I'd love to live in that house. It's very, it sounds nice. It's, you know, the noise of the water running. And there's just a small amount of water running under the, under the grist mill, the replica, and then under the street, of course. Now, if you're talking about putting a sluice gate back in there, the one that was there from years ago was uh, two pieces of, uh, of steel with the boards that you would put yeah. in there and then pull one board out at a time. If you are going to design, I'm sure the state's not going to let you do that again. They're going to want something that's going to be made of cement, reinforced cement, probably have to have pilings go down so many feet. Then the dam itself that is now a sieve is going to have to be relined, I think somebody said, with clay um, and several things done. But you're going to have now um, a modern uh, piece of machinery that's going to open and close. Now, you mentioned letting, if there's a big storm coming, then we could have 24 hours to open the dam. I would guess that that is something that would have to be engineered because you can't, you know, to reduce the dam by what, a foot, two feet? How much water are you going to let out? That's a lot of water, eight acres of water. If eight acres, a foot of it, you'd probably wash High Street out if you opened it up enough to, to reduce that amount of water. You'd have to do it very slowly. I see this as a, um, I know last year when we had this on the Warren articles, I completely understood what it was about. It was either rebuild the dam or not rebuild the dam. Now in the state of New Hampshire, I would say over the last decade, they have encouraged every town, every dam in this state to be removed, not rebuilt, okay? Remove the dams and 
let the water flow naturally because we don't need to grind corn anymore. And I know it looks great the way it is, and I'd like to see it stay just the way it is, just a little babbling brook. As far as, as, far as putting a, um, a 2015 engineered dam in there, I don't see how you're going to do it for $650,000. I just don't see it. I'd have to see actual engineering plans to be able to endorse this because I can't believe it. It's the dam, as I said, it's, it's, it's more like a, um, it's like a berm or a, a levee or a dike almost. And, you know, all I can picture is uh, all of the, I know, I, I saw where it, it just leaks through where roots were. And, you know, a, a kid with his finger in the dike basically trying to hold it back. Um, can I address I, some of your concerns? Go ahead, please. Hey. That, well, that, let, I'm done with my comments. Go ahead, please. Hey, first of all, the plan calls for basically building a dam behind the dam, okay, which you won't see from the road or from, from so, so the remaining earth and stone dam will remain in its visual effects is what you see. Yes, you'll have to put a sleuthway with properly working gates in there, okay, which up by where the dam is, or where the dam comes through the current dam, you'll see some gate in, in Sleuthway. But the remaining of it will remain very much the same. I agree that, you know, over years, especially from 1686, that places are built and rebuilt, but it doesn't change that it's not, it's historic in nature and it's historic here, and it's only one remaining out of the 26 in the communities. It is, and I will tell you just about the cost. 650 is the high estimate that comes out of the Stevens Report. I happen to be partners in a building with a guy who just completed the dam down in Colasta, which is a multi-million dollar dam. He believes that we could do it for half the price of the 650. That was his statement to me and told me it's too small for him to bid on because that's the type. So the fact that it can be done, and I believe it can be done considerably less than 650, it's not the issue. Uh, and I, I, I can debate this with you all night, but I certainly did chase down some people to ask the cost of rebuilding and people that I believe knew about the true cost of rebuilding and how it was done. He had a whole different way that he thought should be done. But again, the Stevens report is a preliminary report. It's not fully engineered. I understand that. That's the only, I mean, that's what you have to start with. But the truth of the matter is I believe it can be done for under, under 650. It would be built a 2015 standards. The state is not going to allow us. The, the, the fact that you have to do something, if you don't do that, if you do decommission, you will have to, and I believe, blow ledge out from underneath that building because that is not opened up enough. It is not wide enough, and it will not allow what you've got for, for what the state requires to allow the water to go through there. And you will have to increase the size of the culverts on the other side significantly. So there are several different areas that is still going to cost you upwards to the $400,000 for the decommissioning. And yes, it's going to cost you a little bit more to repair. But it does remain, the visual effects will remain pretty close to as they are now with the exception of the, of the, the gates uh, coming through the sleuthway. Okay? It will be built up behind the current dam that's there. Okay? I, you know, and, and I believe it can be done for under the $650,000 amount. Okay. Mr. Hurley, you live at, uh, you said, 472 High Street. Is okay. your house, is your, give Mr. Hurley correct? Yeah, okay. Um, I, I just didn't, I didn't, didn't see the, oh, I'm sorry. Um, your property, is it is, is it, next? It's out on the point behind. Um, you have there's like a dirt road that you drive down, and then yes, your house correct. is in the back right. there. Because right. I actually drove down there and looked at that. You have a beautiful house. Like, As a matter of fact, when I was driving out, I saw a deer run across. There's the, a lot of deer out my area. It's, it's an incredible. And it's I can imagine. If I was, you guys are oh. if I was, if I was you, I'd be fighting like hell just as you are to get the dam put back in there because your property would Thank be. You very much enhanced by having a very beautiful lake back there again. That's just my opinion, but, and I'm not a realtor neither. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, please. I'm going to ask that we pick up the pace a little bit. We are 45 minutes in this Warren article, and we have many to go for the public, public hearing. Um, that's okay. Mr. Well, as soon as she quiets down. <laughs> All right, I see that this article is broken down as far as funding, and what I see is two major portions. One is $400,000 to take from the unassigned fund balance and a $250,000 from taxation with your anticipation of applying for reimbursement. Just for the $250,000? Uh, 
if, if, first of all, we will apply for any funds from anywhere that doesn't come through taxation. That, that's in there so that the selectmen, if we find a fund or something else, can apply for that. Um, the the 400000 we'll apply for If we can get the whole thing done for free, I, 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 you know, we'll try to get it done tomorrow. You just did mention that you've already went that route and found that the, the funding has dried it, it, up. Without a doubt. It, it, and if anything should open up, that, the reason why this is written is so that should anything open up, it allows the selectmen to go after the money. Well, isn't the application kind of an exercise in futility if you know that there's no money there to do it? But, but if there's money, again, what I'm st stating to you is if for some reason money comes available and something we don't know about right now is someone from the state, the federal government says, look, we have this money that comes available. Here's a, here, the only way you can get it is have something like that written into your warrant that allows you to go, go after it. How about private sources? It mentions about private sources. Any funds that you can have get. Have you sought any private sources? We have asked a few places. Uh, I, 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 I told them I wouldn't really go after them, but I, have, I asked a few places, if nothing else, to at least consider the source of, of helping us fund that. I really haven't got much response from anybody. But All right, thank you. No questions. Thank you. I have no questions. I might make a comment before we vote, though. Uh, Madam Chairman, would you like comments now or just questions? Because I have a lot of comments to make. Rather than just questions. Can we sum it up? You have, you know, you're entitled to your. You want, are say we going to have morning? a round of comments later? Or are we oh, going to have no? Yourself? No way. Let's no, we're not. just going to get. <laughs> we're going to go down and go through this. Okay, I'm going to make a couple of comments because made mentioned earlier last year when I was a selectman that this was not really uh, fully uh, addressed to the public's knowledge. However, on October 21st, we had a meeting with Stevens Associates, and there was also public comment before yeah. that meeting, and there was also questions and answers with the public, okay, on October 1st, 2013, okay? So that's on the first day that was a public comment, okay? On the second day, which is November 4th, it was definitely a public meeting and we were looking at the option of decommissioning rather than spending all the money of trying to repair the dam because there was no money available anywhere for repairing a dam okay except the town's deep pockets okay but we do we did find out that there were opportunities for grants if we decommissioned it because the state's in a position of trying to close all these old rickety dams because they're a risk to the public and we, we looked at that very closely, and we even applied for one, if I believe, but we didn't, weren't lucky enough to get the money. But, however, extra got some money. There is money out there to get rid of these old rickety dams. Okay. So then, on December 16th, which now is three times, you've had four opportunities to speak about this up to this point in 2013. On December 16th, there was two opportunities, too, when we talked about the uh, the commissioning of the dam for the grant we were talking about the grant so that's six times now there was ample opportunity for even an old person like me to waddle up to the pulpit and act like i had something to say about it. and not too many people did okay there were people there but there wasn't enough to get excited about and then at the liberty session another opportunity there was not one person spoke for this issue or against it or for it in relation to saving the dam at the delivery session, which was in, in February of, of uh, this year. Okay. However, there were several people who talked about Article 16, which was the culvert under the road. Okay, not much, I, I can't remember if that article passed or not. I think it did. And we, I don't think we've done anything with that culvert yet either. The town, the voters voted 21, 28, to decommission the dam because they were listened to all the things were said about it. Okay, and there were only 808 against decommissioning the dam. Okay, and if you look at Article 16, same year, that's 2014, 2320 were for de uh, fixing the culvert under the high street, and there was only 612 against it. So the town was basically told by the legislative body to decommission a dam, fix the culvert, and move forward. For some unknown reason, the management of this town has decided not to do anything. And another thing I want to add to that remark is 
$250,000 seems to have gone by the management of this town this year. They okayed it, okay? Yet they didn't want to spend any money on snow plowing. Snow plowing and saving an old dam? Can I ask you to stay no. on this okay. war article? <laughs> yes, I Thank am you. staying on this war article. That meant that somebody else supported that I didn't think we should support this article, okay? Uh, also, in the Stevens report, it was said by the people who were there giving us the Stevens report that it, had, it was too small to have any effect on flooding. And I'm going to add, I'm going to add one more, more remark. When I first moved here nearly 50 years ago, or 50-some years ago, there was a little bit of water you could see when you were looking around at the, at the pond from various angles. It is so overgrown and so filled with silt now that there's very little real water in that pond. And if they're going to have a real dam to do any type of conservation effect by controlling the water, you'd have to dredge almost the whole thing. And Stephen said it was still too small to have any effect on flooding. So my point on this is, the public already said, let's decommission it, let's save money. And if you try to fix the dam, you're gonna, the town's going to be saddled with the state and the feds keeping an eye on it, spending money every year to keep it in good repair. And like was said earlier by my friend up the uh, table here, there's like a sieve right now everywhere. It's a mess. So I think our best interest is to decommission it and move on and be against this article this time and insist that the town follow the legislative body's request where they voted for it le this last year in, the mar in March of, um, of 2014. And I'm just a, a little concerned that what we've done, the, did, the town did, chose to do nothing because of some reasons we can't explain here other than political. So I'm definitely against this article. Thank you. My questions have been answered. Thank you. Tim? Madam Chair, uh, one correction from Mr. Pierce. The town did not make a request, the town voters did not make a request to uh, decommission this dam. They gave a directive, as well as over $400,000 to do the work, and Taj management decided that, well, we don't have to listen to that. We can do something else. Well. We do not know. We've been told this, this tonight dam, we went into that. This dam that, that we're now talking about, this one article we're now talking about, seeks to further continue to fight nature, which, of course, is a losing battle every time. I'd much rather fight in favor of the voters' vote counting than to fight nature's water flows. Thank you, Madam Chair. With that being said, is everyone ready to vote on this? Yes. Do I have a motion? Yeah, I move that we not approve or not recommend this one article. I'll second. second. Okay. Okay. All those in favor of not recommending. We got that all? No, I need to know who's voting no. Well, the motion is yeah. to not recommend. I know, but they're voting no. Right. Against so now well, those works. who are not in favor of the. I hate when we do this. I'd rather yeah. have it that be a recommendation, <laughs> okay? That was a double nod. Now you will be voting no to the motion, which means that you're in favor, that you're in favor of recommending. So the double not. So those in favor of recommending, your hands up. Nobody down here? Oh, point of order, Madam Chair. I think it would make a lot more sense if the motions were stated in the positive direction. I, I, I think that makes it clearer to the voters, but we've already started on this one, so we'll let it go. All right, and any abstentions? Yeah, I'm abstaining. I'm going to abstain. I'm going to read the uh, Stevens report. I'm going to give my reason. I have not followed thoroughly with the proprieties and improprieties as to why this has been brought up again. So on that issue, I am guilty. So if an impropriety was done to the group that actually allowed you to bring this forward again, I want to be able to give you that opportunity. 
I do feel that the voters did speak last year, but by not giving you a recommendation nor taking that recommendation away, I feel that people will weigh in possibly the way they did again, and you put yourself at risk out there with it, and that's my abstention. And Jerry, you want to speak have, to that? Uh, I, I would like to submit that this article does not really indicate that the four hundred thousand dollars voted by the voters would be would be taken from the uh, trust fund or whatever wherever it's located and be placed into the undesignated fund balance as part of the funding of this article. It wasn't clear to me, and it won't be clear to the voter. This article should be straightened out in terms of English so they know you're really only asking for 250 k and you're giving permission to take 400 out of wherever this 400000 is located. Can I speak to that? Yes. Okay. We had this warrant article brought to the Department of Revenue Administration to ask us to make sure we had the correct wording and how it was to be worded to remove the money from the last year's Article 14 and then use that money mm -hmm. towards this. Yes. They wrote the language that you see okay, in the article. I will tell you that I've had years of experience with the DRA. I'm well aware that sometimes their language is a bit confusing. However, that's the language the DRA stated that we needed to use in order to get accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. This puts your mission at risk. Is all I'm you can use their language, but you're more at risk. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Hurley. Thank you. Good time. What was the final comment? Point of order, Madam Chairman. Yeah, one moment. Please, the chair, one moment. Give us colleagues at the end of each eight. article, please. The question was just asked. Eight, 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 four, two. eight yes, four, eight. no, three, or two abstain. What was it? I'm sorry. Not two. recommend. You repeat? Eight, four, two. Eight, four, two. Eight, four, two. To not recommend. Okay, moving on, I'll call that, to Article 39. And this is the town clock petition. Do we have anybody here to speak to this petition? thousand dollars to build a town clock tower. Town well, clock. You want to read it? Stephen, if you would read it. On the petition of Kate Pratt and at least 25 other registered voters of the town of Hampton, shall the town of Hampton raise and appropriate the amount of $75,000 to help defray the cost of constructing a tower to house the town clock and to carry out repairs and maintenance to the clock. Such funds raised by this article to be used along with an equivalent amount of privately raised funds that have been raised and currently in the town's possession to complete the work. The contract for the construction of tower will be directed to Robert Gray Construction per its proposal dated May 31st, 2013, period. This shall be a non-lapsing account per 32 colon 7 comma Roman number, numerals 6 and will not lapse until the earlier of I, yeah, colon I, all funds raised by this article being expended for the construction, repair, or maintenance of the t tower and clock are, double I, um, <laughs> to December 31st, comma, 2020. Majority vote required. Fiscal impact note, finance department, the estimated 2015 tax impact on 75,000 is 0 0.027 per thousand valuation. 2.7 cents per thousand dollars of valuation. Okay. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen. I'm just going to ask a question of our Selectmen's Rep. Um, Mr. Wardell, since this was presented, um, I believe, to the Selectmen already. Mm -hmm. Is this an inclusive number of all work? Excuse me? Do you know if this is an inclusive number of all work on this? I, I'm guessing that this has been presented to you somewhere in some part. That $75,000, is that inclusive of all work? 
still missing what you're saying. I'm sorry. Does, does this cover down, everything yeah. else? What? Does this cover everything to put the clock in? Is it all inclusive? Was that, you may all not know. It may not have been covered, but so, does anybody have the answer to that? I, I don't have that answer. Okay. So, 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 I think I can answer that. Yes, that covers the building and installing the clock on center school property. And the approval from center school has been given for the location. Okay. The clock is close to running at this point. Right? So basically 75000 and we have a home for the clock. Well, from the town. From the town. 100000 has been raised yeah. by the committee. That was the question. Yeah. Is that we already have 100000 This other 75000 will complete it. That's it. Okay. Could you please identify yourself, they sir? I'm John Ring from no Seven Pawnee and Street, Hampton, New Hampshire. I got dragged into the clock today. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> having, to do, having to do some work on it, and uh, um, I'm surprised no one else was here to speak to it, so I didn't want to let it drop. Sure. Thank I you. can thank answer you. pretty much the questions on it. I haven't been to the last two meetings. I'm not really read sure. up on it. Thank so you for helping us with that. Um, I think that based on the information we have, we should be prepared to vote unless anyone has a question. Yeah, does the clock make noise? It will ring. Yeah. The bell will ring again. Good. How long has it been since it rang? Pardon? How long has it been since it last rang? When was it? When the odds fell on the building. Well. So has there been any consultation with the neighbors about their willing to hear the noise? <laughs> That was a big discussion at the school. Well, they can yeah. do it legally, but I'm still concerned about They want to hear the clock ring every hour, every half hour. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that, that's the intention, is that it will ring. Well, there was some concern about uh, the sign in front of the school causing too much lights for some of the neighbors. So I'm just wondering if the neighbors were consulted at all on this regarding the noise factor. They were. I can't answer that. Okay, I, thank I you. Yes. <laughs> all right. Do I have a motion in favor? I don't make a motion. I'm sorry? Motion to approve it, he said. Okay, second on that? Second. I'll second it. Well, one at a time. We have it from both sides. Let's yeah. <laughs> Take it. Back. Who's the motion? Pierce Who's making the motion? motion? Take the motion from Brian and a second from... Who's Steve. second it? Yeah. Everybody. Tim. Mike Pierce. Mike Pierce. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All those in favor of this Warren article? Let's get this clock taken. Do you have a question for everybody? Yeah, about eight years. This is a town's clock. I, I, I do have a question. Do I'm sorry? Do we have to wait till the do this? I mean, we're doing, this, since we're doing it, these things as a hearing, be the public, we the public hearing? Not well, public hearing, public hearing, hearing you can't. We're, we're still in, in our meeting, Fred. Okay. We have, but I did promise that during public hearing, everybody's will have a part. I need to know the no's. Yeah, we got it down here. Everybody's All right, there. everybody with the no? <coughs> no's? Yes, yes, everyone. Yes, Mr. Yes. 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 Farrell. Mr. Farrell, are you the no? Oh. Oh. It's hard. Bear with us. We're a large Just committee, and we, we, we sit yeah. over here this way. It's hard for them to sit. Oh, right he's Sound. a no. He affirms he's a no. We'll get out of here faster. So we have... Oh, no, Two no. Daryl and Travis. <laughs> All right. Yourself Any abstentions? <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to Article 40, yeah. the Vietnam oh, no. Veterans yeah. Moving yeah. Memorial. Yeah. Glenn is going to. Hi, Glenn. Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Glenn French. Um, my name is Glenn French. I am a non-resident, but I am the entertainment coordinator for Hampton Beach. Is there an issue? Uh, this should be spoken to by a resident. Yeah. Then I'll have to step back. Can I read the article? I'll make a motion to allow Mr. French, is there anyone else who would okay. like to, to speak to I'll these articles? All right, all those in favor? I'll second that. Let's go. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Wait a minute. Was there anybody who was not in favor of letting Mr. French speak to this article? Okay. Nothing personal. I just favor re uh, citizens. Okay. And any abstention? <laughs> Why? He just said he's not a citizen. Article 40, Vietnam Veterans Moving Memorial Petition. On petition of Uda Pino and 25 other legal voters of the town of Hampton, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate $5,000 as a one-time donation 
to the Hampton Committee to help defray the costs of bringing the Vietnam veterans moving Memorial Wall to Hampton Beach. Fiscal impact note, Finance Department, the estimated 2015 tax impact on $5,000 is two-tenths of one cent for a $1,000 valuation. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 520. Uh, the plan, this is a project that has been percolating for about five years. Um, the object is to bring the moving memorial. Uh, we have reviewed several proposals. We have yet to contract with anyone. The total cost of this activity will exceed $20,000. We expect to have a major contributor to help underwrite the cost of it. We're looking for a $5,000 donation from the town of Hampton and an additional $5,000 from the Hampton Beach Village District. The cost of freedom is the wall that we have looked at and reviewed. I've seen it twice in two different locations. Uda Pino, uh, who is the chairman of this committee, unfortunately traveling and not able to be here, uh, has reviewed at least two versions of it as well. Cost of Freedom tribute will include the wall, a, which is a tribute to Vietnam veterans, uh, and there is a component that also recognizes those that have given their life in Afghanistan and Iran, as well as a police and firefighters. So that's the proposal, and there are several components uh, we're putting forward. We will be required to make a substantial deposit uh, on this wall at the end of this year. Questions? How long would the wall be here? Uh, it arrives on a Wednesday, and it leaves and departs on a Sunday as it's currently configured. We'd like to modify that a Four little bit. Four days, yeah. It arrives on a Wednesday. It's set up on Thursday morning, and it operates 24 hours a day. So, Glenn, Wednesday. you're looking at Wednesday. Glenn. Glenn, over here. Where are you? Here. I hear you over here. Okay, I'm over here. Glenn, so you're not looking at doing this 2015. Summer. 2016. 2016. Okay. We we need we need that much time to generate them. And the just funds. so the audience knows, um, this wall is going to be at Hampton Beach. Hampton Beach. Okay. Where on the beach? And and the Hampton <coughs> Committee. That's the name of the committee, Hampton Committee. That was established by the Hampton Beach Village District. Is that correct? I believe that's true. Yes. Okay. And who are the members on this committee? I know Uda's the Uda. Uh, I can't tell you the other names on it. I don't know. Okay. I spoke to you prior to the beginning of this meeting, and you you said that some questions that I had because five from the town, five from the village district. Is that going to be enough to do this? And you said no. You're going to need about twenty thousand dollars. So you've got money coming from somewhere else. And you also mentioned that the um, that the uh, Legion is going to be involved in this? Yes, they are. Because the village district looked at doing this a couple of years ago, as you know and as Bob knows, and there was, it was too expensive. It was more expensive, I believe, at the time. Bob Ladd could probably uh, mm -hmm. answer that question. I think you're referring to the, the cost of providing security. That's, that was the problem, but right? The, that, uh, I, yeah. think we have, I think we have resolved that issue mm -hmm. by, um, with the assistance of the uh, American Legion. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is really a, a town and a beach project where we're working together. At least I, I look at it that way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm big on doing these kinds of events. Mm -hmm. Our plan is to do it the last week of summer, before Labor Day. Mm -hmm. I think we can make a major contribution to recognizing the presence of this wall on the beach. Uh, now, I heard someone say, we're on the beach. Well, we're still in negotiation on that. Mm -hmm. I did have a discussion with uh, our former police chief, Jamie Sullivan, um, who does have a sense of humor. Uh, but uh, we talked about doing it down the middle of Ocean Boulevard mm -hmm. uh, and detouring traffic. Um, not a big fan. Uh, we talked about doing it on the sidewalk, and there has been discussion with the New Hampshire Division of Parks. Uh, regarding it. So the location is still up in the air. They've got to come and, and review it. They've got to be able to come and see it and say, okay, yes, it'll work here. No, it won't work there. Well, it can be a feel for time frame. 
to book this? I mean, obviously, you have to book it and plan it. And we, we would probably have to sign commitment. a contract with somebody, and I would guess somewhere in the vicinity of July at the latest. You've got to lock the date in right? because the wall is moving. And there, there are three different walls. The one I described to you is the one that I have reviewed. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got to lock the date in. If it's not available, I mean, we're not going to do it over Fourth of July weekend. It's just not practical. Mm -hmm. um, and there are several other locations we could do it. We're still trying to work those. About details. how much space will this take up? Uh, the wall is 400 feet mm -hmm. long. Um, so, and you need a little room for uh, a tent to be erected. They have a computer so that if you have a name, you can look it up. Uh, and the ancillary uh, signs probably take another 200 feet. I think we have enough. I have a couple of questions. All right, wait a minute. Let's start down one end. And any questions on this for Glenn? I just have a point of information. The village district has the same warrant article on our annual vote at the end mm -hmm. of March. It would be the town putting up 5,000, the district putting up 5,000. The committee running it, I don't believe, is formally the village district. Correct That's correct. Okay. All right. Mr. Waddell? No, nothing. All set. Thank you. No, I, I don't have any questions. It's a lot of money for four days. How did I do? Well, four yeah, days, sure, you know? It sure is. Well, if we pay $1,000 for a band for a couple hours. So I... <laughs> um, I am totally in favor of this. Um, two years ago when we discussed this, we discussed one of the other ones. And the price tag on that was at least, I want to say, $150,000 to $200,000 more. Uh, well, th there is another option. Right. Uh, we, can, we can erect a permanent wall, uh, whether, whatever it may be, and they come in three price tags, $100,000, $200,000, or $300,000. Like that that's a bit much. Right. That, well, that was what came up two yeah. years ago. Um, I am all in favor of this. Um, Uda has done a ton of work. Um, the fact that she's bringing half the money herself is a tribute to her and how much she really oh, yeah. wants to get this up. She does. Um, the only issue would be the location, and I'm sure in two years we can figure that out somehow because the other ones were much larger. And we're going to take up a huge man. I mean, it's amazing how they explain to us how they put these things together. Um, so I'm totally in favor of this. Thank you, Brian. Senator? I'm opposed to it. You know, my feeling is the town has so many needs. You know, and the money to bring this in could be raised privately from the people at the beach or the business community. I'm totally for it for more reasons than I'm, we need to right. get into. Let's move on. Yeah. Michael? No questions. No Let's questions. Up. No questions. So I understand this is longer than, in, than a football field. Wall is 400 feet long. That's correct. So that would be a football field plus the end zones. <laughs> right? And you're going to put this on Ocean Boulevard in the middle of the summertime. At the end of the summer. Well, if we did it the last week of the summer, which is the slowest week, or one of the slowest weeks down there, it would fit on Ocean Boulevard from F Street to D Street, which is 420 feet long. So right in the main beach. Yeah. On the first week in which we have normal traffic flow, we won't have normal traffic flow. Well... Did I hear you say something I'm, about I'm, cost? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting I, I just want to that was one that alternative. Yeah. I don't know exactly where it's going to go. We, right. We've talked about doing it on the sidewalk uh, on, along the ocean, uh, and there has been some discussion with, with the department, with the di Division of Parks. I'm sure that those who enjoy walking on the sidewalk will love, will love having that there. Uh, did I hear you use the phrase cost of freedom? That's, that is what this is called. Okay. So this, is, this wall is referred to as the Vietnam Memorial cost of freedom. Right. So it seems to me that if you were, were, were uh, asking for 
to raise $5,000 in taxes, which is, of course, compulsory, it's actually anti-freedom. <laughs> okay, we done down there, Michael? So I would have to say no. This is, seems oxymoronic. I'd have to say no on this. Okay, Mike. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. I have two questions. How how many days will it actually be at Hampton Beach? Oh, still four. Still four. How many? Four. Four. Four, four days. Yeah. Okay, and that'd be like from a Wednesday to a Sunday or something? <laughs> That's correct. Okay. Okay, and the other Welcome question the I have is if you, if the voters approve this, this much, you're not going to spend the money until sometime in 2016 or when? Uh, that's incorrect. We oh. will need to send a deposit by the end of this year. Oh, so you can actually spend the town's $5,000 this year? Yes. Okay, and, but that's no promise it will happen. Okay. Say again, please. That doesn't mean we'll necessarily have it. If you oh, yes. Oh, you will. By, by then, we will have signed a contract and be obligated to pay that money. Okay, I was just concerned about the path. We will, the incur, the, we will incur the financial obligation this year. Okay, thank you very much. That's all I have. All set. All right, all those in favor? A motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute, I need a motion. I need a motion. Have a motion. In the I'll, positive. I'll make Apple. a motion to approve. I have a second? Second. Second from Joe. All right, all those in favor? The tax and taxes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Anti-freedom, baby. Anti-freedom. Opposed? Yeah, what if they go bankrupt? The pro-freedom crowd here, Madam Chair. Okay. <laughs> you got me. You got me, right, John? Okay. 325K house. Jesus. Any anybody else down here opposed? No, everyone. Okay, so there's four. You have the vote? Mm -hmm. I'm not against freedom and I'm not against the wall, but I don't think this is a good enough plan. I'm sorry. There's, even if this 5,000 from the town and five from the village district, there's still 10 out there that <clears throat> once you sign that contract, you're going to have to come up with the other 10. But oh. by then we will know. That's, that's oh. the reason. We, we have a vote. Right. Let's move on. This, we've moved on. We've taken a vote. Shall the, the vote for review? 10 4 0. Okay. What was it? 10-4-0. Thank you. Ten four. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Ten Thank you. All right, moving Thank you. on to ten four zero. Oh, it looks like Article Forty Two. Yes. What happened to Forty One? Do we have anybody no here money. from the Child Advocacy Center? Thank you. Forty two. Forty two. Questions? What happened to Forty One? Thank you. Still there. We're not voting. We'll share it. Yes. We will share. How come you said? Oh no! <laughs> what dollar amount? But I defer to you because you've been here longer. <laughs> you going to do that for free, or well? My name is Maureen Sullivan. I'm the executive director for the Child Advocacy Center. Um, thank you for this opportunity to tell you a little bit about the Child Advocacy Center. Um, we are. It's a specialized place. It is kid friendly. It is neutral, where we investigate child um, abuses of child abuse and uh, any child that has witnessed a violent crime. That child abuse includes physical abuse and sexual abuse. 90% of the cases that we see are sexual abuse. Um, and looking at the children that we serve in the town of Hampton, some of the information I gave you has Hampton. Uh, your numbers are increasing. Last year we served 12. This year we served 14. Um, I'm not mentioning anything that hasn't been in the press. One of the more recent cases was a child that was missing for 48 hours that was discovered in a Hampton hotel. So we would interview that case to uh, put together a defensible case, to prove or disprove a criminal case. And one of the things I want to mention is disproving criminal cases of child abuse is just as important to the citizens of Hampton because it costs a lot of money for a, someone who's had any allegation of child abuse to disprove that case. So um, the number of cases for Hampton is going up. You're in good company with Exeter and Raymond, towns and surrounding areas. Um, on the second page of the information that I gave you is the formula for what we came up for money and the towns that we ask. Um, Hampton and I think it's Brentwood, the last two municipalities left that have not put us on their budget. So the municipalities of Rockingham County uh, represent 16% of our overall budget. 
Um, we serve the citizens of Rockingham County, 300,000 and their children. We have a typical caseload is about 300 to 350 cases a year. Um, and then showing your budget, I know I asked, a couple of folks asked the question, where do we get our funding? You can see it's very diverse. Um, we should not have to do bake sales when we work in, to approve or disprove criminal cases of child abuse. We work very closely with uh, Detective Champy, with Chief Sawyer, um, and then Troop, um, Troop A, which Chris Vetter, Troop Vetter, whose wife I'm sure was the one who walked around town to get those signatures. So with that said, I'd like to be brief and see if you have any questions. I don't have any. any I'll go by hands raised if anyone has. Yeah, okay. There's a question down here, Madam Chair. All right. This is, uh, this is a new uh, human services uh, one article. You haven't been on our ballot before, right? No, I have not. Okay. And you do know that our town manager scrutinizes all human services going forward. Yes. So sir. you'll be subjecting yourself to that, right? Yes, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm happy to do that. Okay, excellent. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm ready to vote in favor of this article. Okay, do I have a motion? I move to recommend. Do I have a second? I'll yes. second. Yeah. Okay, those in favor? Oh, oh she can't be already. Joan did. Yeah. This is it easy to do, please. Joan Kim's in favor of it. Yeah, okay, okay. Who's okay. no? Any, any no? Anybody field. opposed? Oh. No, 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 and no abstain. abstentions. <coughs> okay, one, one abstention. Only sunny. Okay, thirteen zero one. Thank you. I did sweep the field. Thank you for this opportunity, and thank you for your service. Thank I you for being that. patient with us tonight. We know it's a yeah. long night. Gina, I have oh, one thank you. question. All right, moving on to Article 43, the Christmas Parade. Christmas Parade. Christmas Parade. I'll move that. Who do I have? Anybody going to want to read it? Just move it. Jim, do you want to speak to the Christmas Parade? No. If not. I can, but Rusty's here or Diana. Rusty's on the board. I'll move it. Do you want to speak to this, Rusty? Just move it. You know, pretty half of this room is... is Half of this room works on this. Is it long in here? <laughs> well, no. Nah, just support it. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Uh, I, was I, I, get the vote. I think it's important that people know that this is only a fraction of the cost of the parade. Absolutely. Last year, the, the, the parade cost us an average of uh, between nineteen and twenty-four thousand dollars a year to put on. Uh, so this is just a small portion of what it cost us to run the parade. And we're just coming to the town like we have in the past and ask for a little help with support. Uh, I'll take any questions. I'll try to answer them the best I can. Okay. I raise the hands how much, uh, how much revenue was generated after spending that? Excuse me? No revenue. You generated revenue, I assume, from the parade, yeah? Um, There's no revenue generated. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm ready to vote in favor of this motion. Chair. Okay. Okay. I have a mo let's motion to, <laughs> motion to, to, recommend. to recommend. And who's making the motion? Who's making I the motion? I make the motion. Mike made the motion. I love Christmas. Second. Jerry, Jerry you want to second the motion? I'll second the motion. All right. Mike made the motion. <laughs> Jerry seconded the motion. All those in favor? Unanimous. How can I vote against you? All right. No one's opposed? No abstentions. All right, fourteen zero zero on that one. Okay. All right. Article <coughs> twenty four, the cemetery plow truck. Here comes Matt Shaw. Mr. Shaw, come on down. <laughs> Matt, this is an easy one. Maybe we should start with the last line. Nothing's easy. <laughs> <laughs> that is what the last <laughs> uh, Matt Shaw, 11 Emerald Lane, smooth. Hampton. Um, shall the town allow the Hampton Cemetery trustees to withdraw up to the sum of $40,000 from the Cemetery Burial Trust Fund to purchase a new three-quarter ton four-wheel drive pickup with plow? This will be at no cost to the taxpayers. I understand that the, uh, the selectmen have unanimously voted to endorse it. <coughs> Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to recommend. Second. Second. 
All those in favor? Unanimous yeah, down here. No. Well, except for Pierce. Pierce? No. Anyone opposed? Michael Pierce. Mike Pierce. Okay. Abstentions? None? 1310. It's recommended 1310. Thank you very much. Article 45. Article 45. Mm -hmm. That's the town clerk salary There's petition. Good evening. Article 45, town clerk salary petition. On petition of 25 or more registered voters to see if the town will vote to increase its annual salary of the town clerk from $55,219 to $60,188, with the sum of $58,945 to be appropriated for the fiscal year 2015. Fiscal Impact Note Finance Department. The estimated 2015 tax impact on $3,726 is one tenth of 1% 1 per thousand dollars evaluation. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen 300. This increase is um, requested based on production and revenue collection. The town clerk's office. Um, collects over $4 million annually on behalf of the town. One million of that goes to the state of New Hampshire. Um, the um, new program revenue that we have collected uh, over the last year is over $26,000. So I think that um, additional $3,726 is um, just a small portion of that $26,000. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to take any questions. Madam Chair, I'd like Can to I make see a motion. Show, Can I see a show of hands for questions? Oh, Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones down there, and then I've got a statement, and then I'll entertain a motion. A, a Mr. Jones. Well, mine's more of a statement as well, Madam Chair. Last year, the budget, the budget committee last year actually voted to raise the town clerk's salary given the relative compensation of town clerks in other towns. She is woefully underpaid, woefully underpaid. Right? And this number that, that's being put forth in this one article is almost identical to the number the Budget Committee had proposed last year. Unfortunately, she didn't get it because <coughs> the voters chose not to uh, uh, buy into last year's <coughs> uh, fattened budget. budget. This one here, this one article says, well, it doesn't really matter. We really may making a statement that the town clerk needs to be paid for the work that she's doing. We shouldn't be seeking to get free stuff from people from their labor. She is woefully underpaid. I am 100% behind this. And I'm ready to make a motion to approve this as soon as you get done with your uh, thing, Madam Chair. Oh, gee, thank you. <laughs> How do I come in after that one? <laughs> no. Not personal. I will piggyback on that, what you said, I'm sorry, is true, and that was the attempt that we did last year, and right. the budget failed. On top of that, we have a couple of people that we pay as employees, however we forget that they're elected officials. I have long thought that increases for people who are elected as you are, Jane. This is, very, this is a very appropriate way to entertain a raise for your position. And it does put it in the hands of the voters. You take your chances on that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very, this is more appropriate this way than in a budget. Okay. Because as I said, being redundant, we elect you mm -hmm. to that position. And um, I'm very much in favor of this process. Thank you. So I'll now, make a motion. I'll I move to recommend I make this. A, I well, Tim, <laughs> Tim's shopping it a bit. Make it. Okay, okay. go ahead, Tim. I I'll second it. it. I move to recommend this very favorable warrant article. All right, I'll second it, Joan. All right, all those in favor. Uh, we need a discussion here. We you do want a know. discussion. I believe we have this salary baked into our proposed no. budget. No, it's not. not. The increase is not in the budget, no longer in the budget. In our budget? Right. Mm -hmm. The Budget Committee's budget is, is does not get carry this now? Does not. Even, even if it even if it did, Jerry, it wouldn't affect 
uh, the tax no, rate. I don't want it. does not. The bottom Money line on our budget. In our operating budget as well as a warrant article. That's a, no. a can't-lose situation. No, it does not. So it's not in our proposed budget. Right. And when we take a break, we'll double, we'll look at that again, but let's just stay on this warrant article so we can even get to the budget. All right. All those in favor. It's unanimous down here. All right. Opposed? Opposed? Okay. And, and abstention. No abstention? Unanimous. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I think 47. Yeah, going. Article 47, Ice Pond Dam Petition. Anyone here to speak on that? Mr. Dino, are you going to come and speak to us on Article 47? Thank you. Good evening. I'm Jay Dino, 206 Woodland Road. Um, this is Warrant Article 47. On petition of Jay Diener and 25 registered voters in Hampton, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate up to the sum of $90,000 for the purpose of rebuilding the collapsed ice pond dam, including stop log gates that can be removed and replaced to allow the pond to be used for stormwater storage in the event of major rain events, rainstorms. The Hampton Conservation Commission has committed $40,000 towards the final cost estimate of $130,000 for rebuilding the dam and has paid for the engineering study and design of the replacement dam, both of which have been completed. We will be looking for donations from individuals and outside organizations to help to reduce the $90,000 needed from the town to complete this project. Majority vote required. Fiscal impact note from the finance department. The estimated 2015 tax impact on $90,000 is uh, 0.032 cents for $1,000 valuation, 3.2 cents per $1,000 valuation, not recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 030. I know you've heard about a dam this evening, and I've heard your comments. Um, before I begin, I'd like to ask you to keep in mind that this is a different dam, it's a different pond, it's a different <laughs> environment, different situation, different circumstances. This is not to take anything away from the Gristmill Dam. Our focus is on Ice Pond. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a little background, if I may. Uh, the Conservation Commission, on behalf of the town, purchased the Ice Pond in 2007. The purchase price of $230,000 included roughly just under 13 acres, which included five acres of the pond itself. Uh, the town previously acquired the rest of the pond and about a quarter of an acre that includes the dam. There are also dam maintenance, stream maintenance, pond maintenance easements that are part of that, that were part of that purchase. The purchase was made with $150,000 from the Conservation Commission's Land Acquisition Fund and $100,000 from 2006 Warrant Article Number 40. The Conservation Commission and the town worked hard to ensure that the dam was included in that purchase rather than having it remain um, as part of in private ownership. And the reason we did that was because we felt it was the best way to ensure that the dam was properly maintained. The dam was in disrepair in 2009, and the Conservation Commission put it out on RFP and ultimately hired Du Bois and King to conduct an engineering study and propose a, de a design for the repair of the dam. The cost of that engineering study was about $9,900, which was covered by a New Hampshire Coastal Program grant. Before an article could be put before the voters um, for that repair, heavy rains caused the dam to fail completely, and repair was no longer feasible. So in 2012, the commission contracted with Stevens Associates for a construction design of a new dam at Ice Pond. That contract is for $19,960 and is being paid with Conservation Commission funds. The proposed new dam will be a concrete dam with two spillways, both of which will be con uh, controlled by stop logs. The dam is proposed to be faced with local, local stones, probably those that are part of the current dam, so it will fit in with the local landscape. 
estimates for construction of the dam, which also includes the site work, construction of a coffer or temporary dam behind the work area, and construction of the dam itself ranged from a low of $85,000 to a high of about $160,000. In discussion with Stevens Associates, their mid-range estimate is $130,000, and they feel that is entirely reasonable and achievable. The Conservation Commission is proposing to cover $40,000 of the cost of this dam. $22,000 is coming from funds that had been donated previously to the Conservation Commission for other projects that ultimately were not completed. We went back to the donors and got permission from them to reallocate those funds for this purpose. An additional $18,000 is coming from the Conservation Commission's Land Acquisition Fund which provides for maintenance as well as acquisition of conservation land and easements. The ice pond is used as it was designated to be used when we originally purchased it for passive recreation, including hiking along the shore and back towards 12 shares, birding, boating, snowshoeing, and ice skating. The pond is a habitat for a variety of species that travel in the water, in the air, and across the land. Dale Water <coughs> Pond Dam had been backed up by a secondary dam that was built by some industrious beaver, beavers who, who were not paid. Um, but heavy rains just before Christmas both washed out the remaining spillway of the constructed dam as well as all the work that the beavers had done. And so there's nothing there now that's holding the water back. And within about 24 hours of that washout, the water level in Ice Pond was down about a foot. Also, we had wash out the culvert that goes under Ice Pond was filled more than half full. So there was a tremendous volume of water that was going down there as a result of that washout. When the Ice Pond Dam is functioning properly, the pond can be used for storm water storage. I know this had been discussed previously. Um, in advance of a significant storm, the stock logs in one or both spillways can be removed to lower the water level in the dam, then put back in place such that is such that when the storm occurs, water can be built up behind the dam and then released at a slower, more controlled rate once the, st once the uh, storm passes. We ask for your support of the Ice Pond Dam Warrant Article so the Ice Pond can continue to provide recreational opportunities for our residents, provide a habitat for an impressive variety of wildlife, provide protection as a stormwater management tool, and maintain the value of the town's investment. I'd be happy to answer your questions to the best of my ability. By a show of hands, who has a question on this Warren article? The uh, board of One minute. Like, show of hands. I have a question. You have a question? Yeah. And Brian has a question down here, so Good. I'll you start. Go. Mike, you, oh, with you. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, why wouldn't the argument that the state is supporting removing dams and with grants and so forth like we were aware of on the gristmill dam why wouldn't that same argument apply to this the state has designated the ice pond dam as a as a no menace dam the risk to property as a result of a failure of that dam are minimal um, so and there's also very little by way of upstream, upstream travel of wildlife that would otherwise be feasible with that dam not being there. So environmentally and from a protection standpoint, th there aren't sufficient reasons to warrant removal of that dam. Okay, so the state wouldn't have a big problem. And I have one more question now. Let's stop. Isn't that filled up with silt like the gristmill dam is? There is some siltation. We don't know how much it is. There is still a significant amount of water in the dam. Um, I don't think dredging is necessary to have the ice pond still fulfill its functions. Okay, thank you. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Brian? Um, like the other dam, or like all the dams, you have to have special blocks put in there. Uh, have to be approved by the state. We need a DES permit for the dam. We, I don't believe we... It was according to the state. They needed the special block, granite blocks or whatever to be put in there because that's why they have to be checked out by DPW first. Okay. 
uh, when Stevens Associate designed this dam, they're, they're aware of what the state requirements are for the dam. They are responsible also as part of our contract with them for securing state permits for the dam, for the construction of the dam. And one more time, what's the total amount the Conservation Committee is going to donate to the, or? $40,000. That's the total amount? And that's all to be taken out of the fund, or that's that's that's, that's, that's coming. Well, part of that is coming. Eighteen thousand is coming from the land acquisition fund. The other twenty-two is coming from those other two projects that were never completed. So they're being re they were already in our budget. They're being reallocated from those projects to this project. And the eighteen thousand from the land acquisition fund. This is this is part of the I'll call it a charter or whatever. Yes, it, it provides for maintenance of properties that are under the auspices of the conservation. So you're not buying any property or well, buying anything? Are you In this buying case, the no, dam? we're not buying. We already own the dam. Okay. We're looking to maintain it. And our fund is designated such that it can be used for maintenance as well as for acquisition. Right. Thank you. Sure. Before we move on to, you have a question, Sonny? Yeah. Uh, Basically, my question is, you know, are you under any time constraints with, with the state on this, or could this be pushed off to another year? I mean, We're, what's driving this warrant article? What's driving this warrant article, and at the Conservation Commission, we had a lot of discussion about the timing of this. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue is that we're concerned that the estimate that we got from Stevens Associate, if we have to wait another year, is going to be out of date. And we're going to have to go back and recost it, which is going to cost us more money. We don't know how that's going to impact the cost of the dam. Because the grist mill is on the state, you know, we, it's an entirely different issue. So. We last year postponed putting this warrant article on the ballot because there were some people who asked it to do that in favor of the grist mill dam. So we, we did that one year. We don't feel that we can keep doing that year after year after year. It's time to let the voters... Maybe it would be a good project for the school. I don't think Bring this is quite a school project. <laughs> <laughs> right. They have the voice talk to work on it anyway. I have, we yeah, before, we, before we put this out for a vote, I just want to make a couple of comments on this. Um, first of all, as far as timing goes, I don't think it's well placed this year. We have already a warrant article that would amount to $650,000 and that warrant article, I feel, needs attention because <clears throat> it's half-baked. We're halfway on that project, and we've got to come to terms with it to do justice to people who voted and people who have extended the work on that. When you put these two together, you're at $800,000 for dams. And I think in one year, it might be more prudent to see how we deal with one dam, and that might give us information going down the road Jay, for, your, for this dam, um, I would say one should probably leave, another one follow, and not do both at the same time because it is it is a big number for dam work. Well, with if I may, with all due respect, I think I think we all need to look at the value mm -hmm. for the monies that are being requested and, and make a decision. Not so much how much is it, but it what are we getting in return for those expenditures, and is that worth our well, my second issue would, with it would be, this is coming from the Land Acquisition Fund, um, which is now expanded to be maintenance as well. It has always been such. It has always been such. If I may. So, no, my question would be on that. If we went forward and endorsed this dam, mm -hmm. knowing that now we do have to maintain them down the road, mm -hmm. Where would the funding be after that dam is straightened out or put back in place? Where would that perpetuated funding be asked from or for? Would we then go to you for the maintenance on a continual basis? We believe that because of the way this dam is proposed to be constructed and because of the relatively small size of the dam, that the maintenance requirements are going to be relatively minor. And yes, I would ask the town to come to us first for maintenance. 
I can't guarantee that depending on what happens to the dam that we would be able to cover all those maintenance costs, but that is part of the reason for being of that land acquisition fund to maintain the properties that are under our auspices. So but then what happens as we continue, if, if we take, if you take on more and more maintenance, the money that we're putting into the fund to be able to acquire land as it comes available, it diminishes that. This is the only dam that we have any control over or any say over. Well, this is Most this year's project. I'm just trying to, as I sit there and, and well, what I'm trying to say is money going into a land acquisition fund that is land acquisition and maintenance, and we escalate on the maintenance side, the question would be, um, were we putting anything away to acquire land? Are maintenance expenditures requested by the town or expended by us without requests from the town have been minimal, <coughs> not almost negligible? Minimal certainly for as long as I've been here. So yes, our, our land acquisition fund does allow for maintenance, but most of what we control has no maintenance requirements. <coughs> Thank you. I'm Can I say one that. thing on this, please? In the case of this dam, <coughs> there's no removal cost because Mother Nature took care of that. It, you, we, we bought a dam with conservation money and Mother Nature washed it away. So there is no dam. Um, well, at least we don't have to pay to take it away, <laughs> like the, the grist smell, so we should be looking at this as a blessing, in, right. a, in a way, in a way. Madam Chair. Uh, well, do I have a motion? No, you have a yeah. question down here. Yeah, that is the question. <laughs> Did I hear you say, Jay, that uh, there was a beaver dam there that was washed away? Is that right? You did. Okay, so the beavers are at work. Yeah. And what I'm hearing then is that the beavers just aren't working fast enough. <laughs> that we should throw tens of thousands of dollars and somehow get the work done faster by man when we know beavers are the best dam builders in the damn world. <laughs> well, I say let's have a little patience and let the beavers do it. There Madam go. Chair, I move to not recommend this, and I am oh, delighted right. for oh, another dimension as well. well. Yeah. No, oh. finally I can support the Board of Selectmen who voted this down 3-0. Wait a minute. Can I have a motion I'll make a motion recommend. to recommend. I'll make a motion to recommend. Can I have a second for that? Second. second. All right. Second. All those in favor of recommending no this way. Warren article by raise of hands. All those opposed to recommending this Warren article. Oh, God. Unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> Let the beavers do it. For free. No, no. Get more beavers. Damn the dams and okay. full speed ahead. The last right? beaver was Are run over by a car. <laughs> Now what am I going to okay, do? So well, we'll borrow some. All right. <laughs> the vote is 14. Thank you for your time. Zero, zero. The beavers it win. is unanimous. <laughs> zero, 14, zero. Just. Beavers win. All right. Just a little comment. We are still on the air, people, and uh, recorded for posterity. I know we get silly after a certain time, but. We really do want to try to get through this. Today. Have we finished with the... Uh, no, we haven't. If yet? you sing it down, we'll get there. I have two questions for the town manager at this point. Fred, do we have... You don't have to. I, I, I'll just yell it out from here. Do we have any other Warren articles now to go over? None. As submitted. Five o'clock, yes. Yeah. So this is it. Mm -hmm. It ain't complete. Okay. No, sure. Yes. May I suggest I make a motion that we take a brief bio break? Yes. A bio break is. <laughs> um, you know what? I, I, I hear you, but. I don't. Um, I hear you, but I want to keep going. Uh, what I would like to do is adjourn this meeting. Um, on the Warren articles, and can anybody see the time? It's 8 58. 8 okay. okay. And as we do that, I would then like to go into um, the public hearing for SAU 90 for their budget and Warren articles. And Ms. Deloney? Madam Chairman, you are, in other words, we are not taking any break at all? No. That's correct. We will take a break after SAU 90 oh, before okay. we do the town. After SAU Okay. And if you have, well, I'm not going to
I need a mo I need a motion on the um, adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Time. Um, Nine o'clock. Second. Second. All those in favor of adjourning? adjourning. Meeting on the Warren Articles. Okay. Now, do you need a motion to start the public meeting? Make one. I'll make a motion that we start a public meeting at nine Second. o'clock. Public hearing. Public hearing. Second. Second. Okay. Second. All right. All those in favor going forward in the public meeting? Good. Thank you. No one's opposed. We didn't need that, but okay. I'm sorry for the commercial, but now it's all yours, Mr. Lane. How would you like for me to proceed? Uh, we have five articles. I'm a non-resident. Serving you as your business administrator. I would like to start with Article One. If you would read it to us. As you walked in the door tonight, folks, uh, all of the articles are included in the handout. I put the handout at the table for the budget committee. There are a number of copies there. It'll be on the web for all of those in the community that want to follow along, along with all the other materials related to our budget and all of our articles. You'll see that by the end of the week. Article number one is the operating budget for fiscal year 15-16. Uh, it reads, shall the district raise and appropriate as an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, the amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant, yeah. or as amended by the vote of the first session, for the purposes set forth therein, totaling $20,061,260. Should this article be defeated, the default budget shall be $19,962,440, which is the same as last year, with certain adjustments required by previous action of the district or by law. Or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 40, colon 13, section 10 and 16 to take up the issue of a revised operating budget only. Previous to this, the school board and the budget committee recommend this appropriation. In very short order, the default budget is a 1.75% increase. It is made up of teacher Contract increases voted last year at the March 14 meeting, totaling 179,000. Increases in New Hampshire retirement worth $162,000. Energy costs worth almost $80,000, offset by savings and health insurance. That's a $343,000 increase. And beyond that, the proposed budget asks for uh, wage and salary increases for non-union staff, totaling $34,000. The addition of a part-time human resource assistant of 18,000 and other, uh, uh, other uh, increases totaling $45,000, the total $98,000 increase. 2.25% is the total increase in that budget. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to this warrant on it? Seeing none. Move on to the next one. On channel 22 and, excuse me, on channel 13 now, you can see uh, the budget work sessions of the school board. And on channel 22, you can see the uh, presentation on December 16th of uh, that budget in its detail to the budget committee. Article number two then is a negotiated agreement with the Seacoast, uh, the, peer, the peer professionals union. Article two reads, to see if the school district will vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton School Board and the Seacoast Educational Support Professionals Association, covering the four-year period from July 1 of 2015 to June 30th of 2019, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing levels. The four years of estimated increase, 15-16, will be $23,230. 2016-17 will be $19,244. 1718 will be $19,908, and in 2018 19, 18766 And further, raise and appropriate the sum of $23,230 for the 2015 16 fiscal year, such sum representing the additional cost attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would have been paid at current staffing levels in accordance with the most recent collective bargaining agreement. Previously, the school board and the budget committee have recommended this appropriation. The negotiated agreement between the paraprofessionals union and, uh, and the school board is a four-year agreement. It seeks uh, to save us an entire negotiating session and the costs related to it. Uh, in the notes, there are a number of items that are included. Most importantly, um, we reduce uh, a 10-step wage and salary, a wage scale from 10 to 7 and then to 4 steps. Um, we, uh, we, we address a, a legal question about compensation arrangements 
making the kindergarten and special ed aides who are very much regular into salaried staff. All others are classified now as hourly. We replace uh, expensive, more expensive full-time benefits with a less expensive uh, site of service plan at a cost sharing of 75-25 with the employees. The rate of increase in the agreement over the four years are two and a quarter percent in year one, one and seven, one point seven five percent in year two and year three, and two and a quarter percent in year four. Again, that information in greater detail will be available on the web at SAU90.org, and you can see it in the presentation that the school district made to the budget committee on the sixth day of January, 2015. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And as was stated, this was supported by both the school board and by the budget committee. Is there anyone in the public who would like to come up and speak to this article? Seeing none, we move on to Article 3. It may have been worth mentioning that was ratified unanimously by the union as well. Thank you. Article number 3 is our long-term maintenance article, and it reads, to see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $300,000 to continue long-term maintenance, repair, and modernization work to include technical and or engineering services at Hampton's three schools, excuse me, school buildings and grounds. This article is a continuation of an annual program planned to keep the buildings updated and in good condition, thereby protecting the taxpayer's investment. Projects planned for 2015-16 are listed below. This will be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 7 Section 6 and will not lapse until these projects are completed or June 30th of 2017, whichever is earlier. School board and committee have previously, excuse me, budget committee have previously recommended this appropriation. As has become the custom in recent years, the article will in fact include on the ballot the list of, our, of projects broken out by building Hampton Academy, Marston, and Center School. Most notably, upgrades in perimeter security, the analog cameras being upgraded to digital and, and uh, the number of cameras being placed on our three buildings increased. That at a cost of 23000 estimated in each of the buildings. We continue the, the work on uh, bathroom renovation at the 97, excuse me, 1975 edition at the Marston School, adding accessibility uh, in that renovation project. And additionally, we ask for the second element of a two-phase um, appropriation to reconstruct and repave the parking lot and bus loop at Marston School. Those are the highlights. Again, that was included in the presentation from the 6th of January to the Budget Committee. Again, School Board and Budget Committee recommend this appropriation. And is there anyone from the public who would like to come up and speak to Article 3? Seeing none, we'll move on to Article 4. Article 4 reads as follows. To see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $86,250 for the purpose of securing owner's project management and architectural support to complete preliminary engineering and establish the project concept and scope for a renovation of the Hampton Academy facility. Previously, the school board and the budget committee have recommended this appropriation. In an effort to be quick tonight, I'm winging my way through these articles, but I want to make sure that folks have the opportunity, especially those at home, uh, I would encourage come contact us at the superintendent's office if you have questions about this article. Uh, anticipate any questions and, and want to offer information tonight. I will summarize by saying on behalf of the school board that much work has been done in, the, in many years, over many years, uh, studies and surveys and assessments and, and preliminary plans to address the needs of this facility that we're standing in tonight. Uh, the decision was made uh, in a past year by the school board to set aside the conversation of any new construction on property at Toll Farm Road that, that the school district owns and to focus instead on a renovation of this facility here at this location. What this article seeks to do is really two things. One, to find funding for us to secure an owner's project management partner who will help represent the school district, protect the interest of the taxpayers and bring a wealth of expertise to this particular endeavor to identify what the scope of this project would be, what the costs reasonably of this project would be, and then deliver for us and with us communication tools, renderings, plans, cost estimates, et cetera, so that we can communicate more 
fully with the public about what that would be and route to another one article that you'll see at a subsequent year. The second is to act in some way a litmus test to, to communicate with the public that this is coming, that the board is ready to move in this direction and to, uh, and to, to test the public's interest and attention to this project so that uh, there are no surprises as we move forward with next steps in the project. These, this $86,250 is intended to secure the services of an owner's project management partner for this year through June of next, June 16, and also to purchase the services of an architectural partner to help with those basic plans and renderings. Mr. Lenny, before I invite anyone up, was it ever clarified about the impact fees and the use? We're, we're working on that, and I, I guess it, given the opportunity to say it out loud, I would say this. One, we will, we will seek guidance and be prepared to make recommendation at the deliberative session about any language that might be added in a parenthetical manner to this article that would explain the possibility that impact fees could offset this. But the, the concern for that, or, down, or, or the, not confusion, the concern for that is uh, we certainly will seek out impact fees, whether the language is here or not. If this article appears to be completely non-tax impact, you may end up with a very positive vote that does not suggest what the public's interest is in the renovation of this facility. Mm -hmm. If you take away any of the concern for the finance of it, maybe the litmus test doesn't really tell you much. Okay. Our goal would be, right now there is somewhere in excess of $120,000 available to SAU 90 as a part of those impact fees. We would seek those impact fees to offset this. We will, we will move forward with that, speak to the selectmen, and if this were to pass, certainly that will be a request that's made so that there won't be taxes raised to fund this. It will instead come out of the impact fees already collected. But the dialogue, I think, is something we should have as we move forward and get to the deliberative session about whether we want to parenthetically call this a non-tax impact because it will be funded by impact fees or whether we let that be something that comes down the path. Does that make sense? It yeah. does. Um, we've spoken about this at length, and I feel that Unfortunately, it's like we gave you 20 words or less to get this all out. Um, but you've done a remarkable job, which, by the way, for anyone watching who wants a much broader discussion, especially on this Warren article, they can, you can replay our, um, the Budget Committee's present, uh, presentation from SAU 90 of December 16th. That was the date that you came in? That was the budget, yeah, and then the warrant was on the 6th of January. Right. So go back and review those two dates because we did get very much in depth at those two times on this um, for further information. Is there anyone here wishing to speak to this Warren article? No? All right, seeing none, last one for SAU 90. You're Moving on to five. Article five was a citizen's petition. It's the child benefit services article that you have seen in the past. It reads as follows to see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $46,750 to provide child benefit services in accordance with RSA 18949 for students who are residents of the Hampton School District and attend Sacred Heart School located in Hampton, New Hampshire. This by petition. In previous action, the school board and the budget committee have recommended this appropriation. I don't believe that there's anyone here tonight from Sacred Heart. What I can tell you is uh, it was explained in that meeting on January 6th by the principal of the school that the number of Hampton students has risen from 42 to 49. Uh, and so this dollar is rising, this request is rising from 42,005 last year to 46,750 this year. It is 917 or 970,000, uh, $970 per student. I can clarify for you that child benefit services are uh, are supported by or made lawful by RSA 189-49. This, the folks at, at Sacred Heart in years past actually transact these dollars through our purchasing system, as do our schools here in Hampton School District. Those transactions are reviewed by the superintendent and then by myself as a part of that process so that we can verify and vouchsafe that they are transacted in accordance with RSA 189-49. Generally speaking, they're used to support the nurse in that school, as well as uh, instructional materials uh, and educational supports. Any greater detail, uh, the, on our website, again, by the end of the week, you'll see 
the petition itself with the signatures and the language, as well as the proposal of how the dollars are anticipated to be spent. I will also tell you before I step back that mm -hmm. superintendent and I will uh, set the superintendent and I will be recording along with uh, other members of the district uh, a video that re that again speaks to this, provides some of that same detail. That'll be out there on the web. Look under uh, the operations tab under annual meeting and you'll see all of that information that you might like to for all of the articles on this warrant. Thank you very much, Mr. Lenny. All right, no further discussion? Anybody uh, from the I speak on this? I'm going to look. No. Hampton resident. No. To what end, Lenny? Yeah. Well, I voted against it at, at the budget meeting. My, my feelings are public funds should go for public education. If Sacred Heart was a Muslim school, I suspect we wouldn't pass the Warren article. Sonny, we've already passed it. We've already voted on this. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing for SAU 90. Second. Do I have a second? All those in favor? Unanimous. Opposed? Thank you very much. And never we. Are you going to take nobody a leave. We need to. Nobody leaves until three copies. Oh, got to pay that. Yeah. Oh, that. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, you know what? Start down there while I'm talking. Start down at Joe's end. Um, I think to refresh everybody, we're going to need to take a break. Uh, but before a fast ten-minute break, I'm going to ask Keith in the back. Mr. Lasad, how long do we have the room for tonight? Thank you very much. So refresh yourself for 10 minutes. I'm also going to ask if there is anyone speaking to any Warren article other than the town budget. If you would come up and let me know. I'm going to try to go through them in a manner that if you're here for just one or two Warren articles, that we may be able to put those in front and, and help you out.
One thing we'll get okay, everybody, we're going back live. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Tension no, down the end of the table. Thank no, you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Ma'am, we are attentive. Thank you. All right. Um, welcome back, everybody. Be poor. Um, going to open public hearing. Somebody at I'll make a motion to yeah. open the public hearing for the town of Hampton. And Tom Packet 9.41 p.m. All right. All those in favor and opening up into this public hearing. In favor of opening up public hearing? Thank you. Unanimous. Yeah. Uh, thank you. All right. Seeing the hour of the night and how fresh everybody is, I'm um, going to just do something a little bit different. We're going to, I asked everybody during the break if there were warrant articles that they wanted to speak to other than the town budget, because I know there's quite a few who are probably looking to speak to that. Um, so we are going to start out with those. Does, can I have a vote from the committee because our town manager um, is not a resident of Hampton. Can I have um, a motion to allow our town manager to read the Warren articles? No, well, I've already made the motion. Okay, that well, for anybody that, that, was, that wasn't a resident. I'm sorry? That was for anybody that wasn't a resident. Well, this is just to have Fred read the, the Warren articles. Read all of the Warren articles? No, only the ones that we have people here to speak to. I have the list. It has one, it has four of them, and then the budget. Okay. okay. She's a resident. Select was a resident. Okay. Not a resident. Which one, Mary Louise? Which one is? Okay. Well, now we have another one. So I ask for the first time: Is there anyone who did not see me on the break, who is going to speak to a Warren article, other than the town budget itself? Okay because we're only going to take up the ones that we have someone actually here to speak. Okay? Um, and we okay with Fred, everybody? Yeah. Yep. We're okay with that, Fred. He's just reading the Warren article, right? We're just reading the Warren article. So, Fred, if you would start with Article 24. Article 24. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> article 24, part-time special police officers training. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $99,520 for the purpose of funding an extra class of officer training beyond that which is already funded by the, in the police department operating budget, and for said funds to pay for all costs associated with the recruiting, hiring, training, and equipping a group of part-time special police officers for the Hampton Police Department? This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation in accordance with RSA 32 colon 7 Roman 6 and shall not lapse until the part-time police mm -hmm. officer's training is completed or by March 31st, 2017, whichever is soon. Elsa? Yes, could you introduce yourself, Mary Louise? Not like Mary Louise Wolsey, 148 Little River Road. This is an item, as I have been saying all through the budget process, that belongs in the budget. Chief Sawyer made a very specific, uh, gave you a very specific description of what he needs. This basically is to fund the second class or the second training uh, situation for part-time police officers in this town. You know, especially those of you who live at the beach know perfectly well the serious, serious situation of lacking police officers and special police officers in the town of Hampton. A tremendous attrition rate because we train them so well that they're snapped up by other entities. And in some cases, it's very difficult to find qualified people. What I would like to ask you to do, please, is to put this in the budget. When you review at the end of this session, that 99000 should go into the operating budget. That needs to be in the operating budget and stay in the operating budget. And in case of a, quote, default budget again next year, 
that will be locked in and move forward so you won't have to keep having special money articles. And I'm sure the Board of Selectmen, if this is placed in the operating budget, will withdraw this article. We should not be funding po positions in the police department or, or the fire department by warrant article. You know we need this. The chief knows we need this. And the community should know that we need this. And this place for this money is in the operating budget. And I'm asking you to put it back there so we can withdraw the special article. Thank you. Anyone else to speak to Article 24? To the Marco. Uh, Richard DeMonaco, 11 Milburn Avenue, Hampton, New Hampshire. Uh, I should uh, let you know that I have a connection to the police department, but not the special police offices, okay? So I'm not talking about the regular offices, I'm talking about the part-time offices. What Mary Louise just indicated to you is a very good possibility. Uh, in this country right now, there is a sentiment towards police officers that isn't as good as it used to be. And there could be a reactionary vote this year because of that sentiment. And if this is voted out, I, I, we might as well put a sign and close the beach. <laughs> because if you listen to the chief, and I don't want to speak for him, uh, I did spend 28 years on the department. So I could speak from experience. We used to have 50 to 55 police officers part time. We are going to be down to 30 if if we can get them to the school. <laughs> if we can't get them to, we we could possibly be between 25 and 30 part time officers. Do you, do you realize that's less than one or two a shift <laughs> over seven days? four shifts a day. Think about it. Uh, there's times down there, there used to be times you could look at a green shirt and find one. There are times now you can't. And we've been very fortunate. I call it fortunate. I don't call it lucky. I call it fortunate. Uh, it's a good thing we have some. And our experience officers are leaving, are retiring. And the ones that have two or three years experience as a part-timer, are taking full-time jobs at other places. <laughs> and what, you could la uh, literally be out there with first-year specials, you know, that have had 10 weeks of training and not have that experienced guy with him to run them true for two or three years. you really got to think about this. You, you have to think about this seriously. This should be put back into the regular budget you already, uh, there's, I think it's a hundred thousand dollars difference. So it isn't going to affect it, you know, as to the regular budget and the uh, default budget. You, you just got to put it back in. You can't afford to have the same feel. And I remember once, I, I don't know if I, I checked with the town attorney, but uh, I remember once if you put an article in in the field, you couldn't bring it back the next year. Uh, it was something about repetition. But I, I could be incorrect about that. But if it's not in there, I, I don't know what you're going to do this year. You can't work these guys 120 hours a week. <laughs> yeah. Be, really think about it. Really <coughs> spend some time thinking about it. Uh, you, you, we spend $20,000 a year on educating our children. <laughs> Uh, if you if you added up the when it comes to high school and our and we should be, but we should be protecting our citizens the same way. <laughs> you know, you got to put this money back in the out of the back in the record budget. Thank you, Mr. Mackey. Anyone else to speak to Article Twenty-Four? Oh. Moving on to Article 32. Madam Chair, Article 32.
shall the town of Hampton vote pursuant to RSA 35 colon 9 dash A Roman 2, which became effective on July 26, 2014, to authorize the trustees of trust funds without further action of the town meeting to charge any expenses incurred for professional banking or brokerage assistance for capital reserve funds in their custody as authorized in RSA Chapter 35 against the capital reserve funds involved. Such authority to remain in effect until rescinded by a vote of a town meeting, which said vote to rescind such authority shall not occur within five years of the adoption of this article. If this article warrant passes, then the $1,500 appropriation in the operating budget for the expenses for professional bankery, banking or brokerage assistance for the town's capital reserve funds in 2015 shall not be expended. Thank you. Mr. Silberdick. Good, good evening. I'm Norman Silberdick. I'm the chairman of the trustees of the trust funds. We had spoke to you earlier about this uh, article, and you were kind enough to uh, recommend it, uh, 11 to 3, and the Board of Selectmen recommended 5-0, and then subsequently we s executed an agreement with Mackinson and Company for their professional services for 2015. The concern I have is that with the recent events of both uh, recommendations to cut the operating budget of the town by a million and the default budget by 128,000, I believe. Uh, I'm left with a question about whether uh, where our $1,500 uh, is at the moment because it's an obligation that would be a, legal, a contractual obligation that will be heading into 2015. And as such, <clears throat> it should be included in the, uh, in the default budget. And so I would respectfully request that the, to the extent that you're able to increase the default budget by $1,500, that you do so. And uh, that's really, I, I, other than that, I really, I'm at a loss as to. Uh, Are you speaking about the, the budget or the default budget? Well, because we have no control over the default budget. Well, we need the, we need the town to um, increase the default budget by $1,500, and we need the budget to be increased by $1,500 so that this item is not lost in, uh, in the process. If the Warren article passes, it's moot. But if it doesn't, then we still have an obligation to pay Mackinson and Company. Thank you. Thank you. Fred. <coughs> Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. Uh, I just want to emphasize that uh, in order, when this uh, new RSA came in, this provision, uh, this was the result of a tremendous amount of work by the entire Hampton delegation. Uh, Representative uh, Cushing and Munns uh, on the Democrat side, Representative uh, Emmerich and myself on the Republican side, and Senator Stiles. We put in an awful lot of work on this thing. Uh, we had to go back to the uh, Municipal and County Government Committee several times with amendments. We participated in work, uh, work group sessions, subcommittee work groups, and so forth. And we really shepherded this thing all the way down the line. Uh, basically what it's doing is it's allowing, it's the same way that most people have their own personal portfolios uh, managed. Uh, if, if your manager makes money for you, he gets paid by taking it out of what he earns for you. So it doesn't ever come out of your pocket. And that's what this change is. It's not separate money that comes out of some other source. This allows it to come out of the money that is earned by the good management of this fund. So it was a, it was a tremendous effort. We got a, a, a pretty solid vote by the time uh, we went through on it. And I'd just like to uh, emphasize the fact that uh, this is an enabling legislation. It means that towns can do it. It's not compulsory. It's not you must do this. But every town needs a warrant article to determine whether they will or not. And I would strongly recommend in, in view of the tremendous examination that has got on behalf of all the towns all over the state, uh, the work that's been put in here, uh, that you maintain the solid vote that you have here uh, on this in support of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Price. <coughs> Any other discussion on Article 32? Okay, seeing none, 
I'll move on to Article 38. Madam Chair, Article 38. On petition of Norman R. Hurley and 200 registered voters, the see if the town will vote to rescind the $400,000 from the non-lapsing fund created by Article 15 of the 2014 town meeting. <laughs> and further, to raise and appropriate the sum of $650,000 for the purpose of repairing and or rebuilding the grist mill dam, also known as the mill pond dam. $400,000 of this amount is to come from the town's undesignated fund balance and $250,000 from taxation for 2015 only. Additionally, to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, accept, and expend for said purposes any funds from the State of New Hampshire, the Federal Government, or any private source as may become available, which funds shall reduce the amount to be raised by taxation. This shall be a non-lapse <coughs> appropriation per RSA 37 colon, 32 colon 7 Roman 6 and will not lapse until the repair or rebuilding of the grist mill dam is completed or until March 31st, 2019, whichever is sooner. Thank you. And Fred? Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to speak on the uh, Article 38. I'm sorry, can I just stop you oh, so I'm that sorry. we have your name and address? Candace Stelmack, 488 High Street. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank you for giving our speaker so much time in your previous session, and I'm going to make this quick. For anybody that has not read the Stevens Report uh, or seen, we do have a, a transcript of the first meeting when uh, the Stevens Associates presented to the town everything about that in common language that we can all understand. And also the uh, Friends of the Grist Mill Pond have come up with a presentation to educate the public so they can make up their own mind whether it should be repaired or decommissioned. So all these three things I'm going to put on our website and on our um, Friends uh, Facebook. So the, the website is Friends of Grist Mill Pond, not net, dot net. And Facebook is the same phrase, just with the spacing. And I think nobody should make a vote on this without knowing what that Stevens report says. It was made for the town. It has both sides of the decommissioning and the repair. And if you want to be well informed, that's what was given the town so that the town could understand these options. And also, I want to invite anyone that wants to come to the grist mill, come inside, see the property, especially the selectmen, especially the budget members, and see what you're voting on before you vote on it. I appreciate that. Thank you. Candace, that's friends of the grist mill pond friends dot of, net. Friends of grist mill pond dot net. Get rid of the, the Okay. Friends of grist mill pond dot net. Yes. Thank you, you have the Steven, the uh, report on there. You have the Stevens. We're go, I'm going to put it on there tomorrow. And what else do you have? The Stevens report, the uh, transcription of the first hour and a half meeting that, that uh, Stevens reported to the town and also the um, presentation that we developed that we took to the library to educate the public that, again, puts this into English. Because when you're talking 132 cubic feet per second and blah, 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 very few of us can understand that. Okay. So we're trying to put it in English. Thank you. Thank you. Max, is it possible to get a little note in any article that will give that website? I took it down. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Max is our new reporter with the Hampton Union. So hopefully that will get in there. <laughs> Thank you. Fred. Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. Um, about a year and a half ago, I was appointed oh, oh, to a newly, a newly created commission called the Coastal Risk and Hazards Commission. Mm -hmm. And it, com it com <coughs> comprises about 35 members. Uh, members from all 20 of the communities that are either along the coast, the whitewater communities, or the ones that are uh, along the estuaries and the rivers, uh, the, the uh, still water communities, and then a, um, uh, representatives from the legislature and, and a number of state departments. Uh, the idea is to see, find out if there is any, the purpose of the commission is to find out if there is any need for legislation or not uh, that is needed to protect the seacoast of New Hampshire uh, from one of three things, or maybe all. One is storm surge from the ocean. Another one is sea level rise. Another one is flooding. Now the flooding is basically going to come from, from the west. The other two are going to be coming from the east. 
we've been at this for about a, about um, a year and a half right now. Uh, several months ago, about three or four months ago, we split into different groups with similar in interests. Uh, we split into the coastal group, which are the towns from Seabrook to Portsmouth, and uh, I'm the chair of that uh, subcommittee. There's another committee that is all of the towns like Exeter and Durham and Dover and all the people along Great Bay and all of that. And uh, the third one is all of the state agencies and the, and the uh, legislative delegations as well. And uh, we have uh, uh, a couple of senators on it, a couple of representatives. Uh, we've got representatives from DES, uh, you name the department up there, and DOT, we've got all of them up there. The idea on all of this is to come up with something that transcends the political boundaries, say, between Hampton Falls and Hampton, or between Hampton and Northampton, or Northampton and Rye, and so forth. Because when you get up in an airplane and you look down, those lines aren't on the ground. So the idea is we've got to protect the watershed itself. We've got to protect the coastline itself so that one town does not have one policy and the other town has another <coughs> policy that's incompatible so that they work at cross purposes. One of the things that's, that is a part of all of this is the ability to control inland waters to the extent that we can. We have a very unique area around here from Portsmouth all the way down uh, through to the Massachusetts line and beyond uh, that is our inland marshes. And these flow, and they flow with the tides, they flow with the floods, they flow with the rains and everything else. And one of the important things to maintain a healthy uh, aquaculture and the, uh, the, the entire uh, system through there is that we are able to keep the water flowing but we can do it on a controlled basis so it doesn't destroy us while it's at it. Uh, one of the, the important th parts of this, components of this, are the dams that are along uh, the inland waterways that we have. Whether they come from uh, the west, or whether they come from north to south uh, through the marshes uh, and so forth, we need to have that ability to control uh, the waterways. When I was listening to this thing right here, the first thought that went through my mind from some of the projections that we've had of what we could have on these uh, uh, one percent floods. They don't call them hundred or two hundred or five hundred years anymore. They call it one percent because you don't know how, how quickly they're going to. We come. have one every other year. Is if these things come in, and you get a tremendous flood that comes in from the west, and comes down through to the to the mill pond, and goes through, and all we've got is a culvert through there, a half pipe. I don't know. I I, I get the feeling that that grist mill is going to be gone within about two years and that High Street is going to be gone shortly thereafter just due to the flow of water that we are not able to handle adequately. But if we have the ability to, it's just like boats going through the Panama Canal, the ability to raise and lower that water level on a controlled basis, then we can prevent the surges that come through that do the damage, and we can control it to the point where it can be beneficial by help maintaining a healthy water flow through there rather than an uncontrolled water flow. So I would be in very strong, I uh, urge you to be to strongly support the uh, rebuilding of, of a proper dam system through there. Uh, another thing uh, so that we can uh, control this and it will be a part of this thing that comes, this plan that comes along. Everybody says there's no funding available. Um, I think, no guarantee on this, but some of the discussions that we've had, some of the murmurs are that since this has to do with, uh, and I'm not a big fan of this side of the argument, so it, this has, is related to global warming, uh, sea level rise, that there's going to be funding available to do what is necessary to control our waterways, our, our shoreline uh, waterways. So I would not discount, although I can't prove that we will have it, I would not discount uh, available funding or some sources of available funding that are not there right now. I think they probably would be. One final thing, the town of Hampton only owns a few pieces of historic property. We've got the grist mill, we've got the fish houses, we've got the blacksmith shop over on Barber Road, and we've got the, what's left of the, uh, the, the, the cobbler's shop over there, whatever that was, uh, uh, right next to it. If we don't do everything we can to, to really maintain these and protect them, we're going to be losing the history and the heritage of this town. Fortunately, we have a group, uh, Candy Stelmach and the friends of the, uh, of the Mill Pond, uh, 
they're there to try and, and preserve this and preserve the heritage of the town. One of the things that hurts me is somebody that moved here 15 years ago and decides he wants to change things because, ah, that's just an old dam. I don't really like that attitude because I grew up here and I treasure every one of these old buildings. I remember when there were a dozen working farms in this town. Now we've got one and it's conservation, it's all conservation land. Uh, we've got a lot of things that we used to have that were, were really good parts of the town. It made it a great place for kids to grow up. Now what do we got? We got housing developments everywhere. Let's try to preserve what we have. Let's preserve that mill pond. Let's preserve the, the, the dam that goes along uh, with it, the grist mill and everything else, so that we'll have something to pass on to our kids. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else to speak to Article 38? We didn't vote on it. Yes, we, we, we did uh, already. Yes, we did. Um, Seeing no one else, we'll move on to Article 39, which is the town clock. Madam Chairman, Article 39. Yes. On the petition of Kate Kratt, at least 25 other registered voters of the town of Hampton. Shall the town of Hampton raise and appropriate the sum of $75,000 to help defray the cost of constructing a tower to house the town clock yeah, you and to carry out repairs and maintenance to the clock? Such funds raised by this article to be used along with an equivalent amount of privately raised funds that have been raised and currently in the town's possession to complete the work. The contract for the construction of tower will be directed to Robert Gray Construction for its proposal dated May 31st, 2013. This shall be a non-lapsing account per RSA colon 30, 30, RSA 32 colon 7 Roman 6 and will not lapse until the earlier of, one, all funds raised by the article being expended for the construction, repair, and maintenance of the, of the tower and clock, or two, December 31st, 2020. Good. Thank you. There was a time several years ago that there were only three people in the town of Hampton that knew where the clock was. Myself, Glenn French, and Ann Carnaby, because it was in her, her barn. It was there with only a few people knowing about it so that somebody wouldn't want to go in and rob it and take a piece here for a souvenir and so on and so forth. We, we hid it to protect it. And then uh, Selectman Searle decided that it had to come out, so we had to do something with it. That was 15 years ago. Uh, that that finally came out, or, or pretty close to that. Um, Bobby, or, uh, Bobby Weber, uh, uh, or excuse me, uh, uh, yeah, Bobby Weber uh, uh, made a, a commitment that he wanted to rebuild the clock, and he came to the town and said, and said so, and he, and he volunteered his time and his effort and so forth. And there's been a lot of fundraising done on this thing. And there was an assurance given to the town that when, the, when they started talking about a location, that it would be done with private funds. It would be absolutely done with private funds. Now, I'm no stranger to run into private funds for a very worthwhile, uh, iconic uh, thing in the middle of town. The gazebo in the middle of the town was a four-year effort. Bob Labonte, uh, who owns Labonte Financial up above uh, the old salt, and myself and a couple of other people who are no longer in town, we spent four years raising money for that thing privately. We didn't start the construction until we had the money that we needed to do it. We didn't come to the town and ask for, for, for more money because we got the permission on the, on the condition that it would be a privately funded effort. Now, I'm very much in favor of this clock. I, I did a lot to try and protect it and help it. I've been in favor of it all the way along. But I am not in favor of the town expending money for something that should be a private fundraising deal. We've got, they've got an effort right now selling bricks. And I bought my brick. I don't know if anybody else is. I'm more than willing to do that. But I don't want it taken involuntarily out of my taxes. That's what I don't want. I want to be able to give the money that I want to give. And if the people who are promoting this really want to have that thing go up, they need to get off their butts and get out and start knocking on doors and doing mailings and making phone calls and asking for money. There are a lot of ways to do it. You can put on golf tournaments, you can put on road races, you can put on all kinds of stuff that will each 
raise a, a significant amount of money. It might take another th three or four or five years, but um, I think that's the way we need to do it. Is there anyone who would like to speak on that article? Article 39. Seeing none, we'll move on to Article 40. Madam, Madam Chairman, Article 40. On the petition of Uta Pinio and 25 other legal voters of the town of Hammond, <coughs> shall the town vote to raise and appropriate $5,000 as a one-time donation to the Hampton Committee to help defray the costs of bringing the Vietnam Veterans Moving Memorial Wall to Hampton Beach? Thank you, Fred. Fred? Fred and Fred. Last one. Um, similar thing like this came up uh, before the state legislature a few years ago. So we wanted to have a welcome home Vietnam Veterans Day uh, sometime in March. And the majority of the military people who had served in Vietnam were against it. And the reason they were against it was they said, if you couldn't have had the common decency and the patriotism and the respect for the people that fought to defend you when we were in Vietnam, when we came home and then, instead of turning your back on us and spitting on us in the airports and so forth, why the hell are you trying to do it now other than to make yourself feel good by a, by a feel-good measure? This is the same thing. The organization that does this, they are, they are, I'm guessing they are a not-for-profit organization. But that does not mean that the people who do it don't get paid, and paid pretty well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they want to get paid pretty well, then they need to go out, and the people that sponsor it, mm -hmm. same thing as with the clock, they need to sponsor it with private fundraising that and private donations. Things that everybody voted for. Mm -hmm. Nobody is a bigger supporter of the Vietnam veterans than I, and I've got uh, uh, legislation in this year that's going to do things on, on behalf of veterans. I've got a lot of things like that. I am very outspoken on that. I am a very, very active member of the Legion, and I do everything I can to support veterans. But this is something that somebody is making money on. And the plan for it is to, where are we going to have it? Some place at the beach. Now, how many times have you said, I don't, Mike Pierce, how many times have you jumped up down and said, we don't have enough of a plan on this? We don't have anything specific enough. This is the same thing to me. It's too general. It, uh, we'll throw it someplace in the middle of Ocean Boulevard, and if we can't do that, we'll put it on top of the casino or maybe out in the marsh someplace. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not a very specific plan. plan. I'm sorry. Uh, this, if this were a specific plan with a specific thing, but hey, we'll take your 75 grand. We want most of it this year. We'll see you in a couple of years, and we'll find a place. That's not a plan. They need to have a specific plan, an advanced person that came in here and did it. And if you're going to pay respect to Vietnam veterans, let's do it the right way. Uh, not a day late and a dollar short. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Okay. In a minute, we're going to move on to the town budget warrant article number 12. But before we do, is there anyone else here wanting to speak to any article, any money article, other than article 12? Because I will close that discussion. Okay. So we will move on and close all discussion on all remaining Warren articles, seeing that there is no one to speak to them, and move on to Article 12, and that is the town budget. Madam Chairman, Article 12. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate as an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles, and other appropriations voted separately? The amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant or is amended by vote of the first session for the purposes set forth therein, totaling $26,379,040. Should this article be defeated, the default budget shall be $26,507,097, which is the same as last year with certain adjustments required by previous action of the town meeting or by law or the governing body may hold one special town meeting in accordance with RSA 40 colon 13, Roman 10 and 17, excuse me, 16, and she'll, uh, she'll take up a vote uh, for a revised operating budget only. Majority vote required. Okay. Anyone like to speak to this article? Madam Chairman, David Lang, um, 66 Park Avenue in Hampton.
there was a, a cut made. I was not able to stay um, out of the operating budget. Could you just identify for me the number on the cut that was made out of the proposed operating budget? It was one million. From the proposed altogether? From the proposed, yeah. Uh, it's over a million dollars. <laughs> So you have a calculator back there? Here's, here's the proposed. One million one hundred thirty-five thousand nine hundred ninety-three dollars. Uh, Madam Chairman and members of the Budget Committee, I want to um, first of all thank you for your diligence and your uh, exercise of fiduciary responsibility in um, performing what is the purpose of the Budget Committee, which is a, um, a legislative committee. Uh, for the legislative body, a finance committee or fiscal committee for the legislative body, and asking um, the tough questions. But for the members of the public, this is the budget, this is the money that makes Hampton work. Um, this is the money that when the snow comes, we push it out of the way. When you put those recycling bins and your trash cans to the sidewalk, it disappears. When you flush the toilet, it goes away. You need an ambulance, you need a cop, you get out and pay your bill at Town Hall, you need help at Town Hall, you make a call. These are the folks that, this is the money that, that makes that town, the town operate. Unfortunately, and I've been around a while in this town and attended, uh, I, I don't think I've missed a town meeting, maybe one or two um, that I've missed but in, in the last several decades. But I want to share with you what, what we've trans, kind of transferred into, that we've become a town that really plays this game for me between how to make the town work and the number of default budget number. And how um, that default budget number kind of becomes this magic circuit breaker. See, I believe when Senate Bill 2 was created by the New Hampshire legislature, it was an opportunity for taxpayers to, to vote on specific items and to have a say so they didn't have to come out like they came out in the turn of the century when they come out from their farms and they got together as a civic obligation and put together and put money together and thoughts together in which to make their democracy work. And that's not like that anymore because of two jobs and three jobs. So we had to make it a little bit easier way for people to, to have their say. So we created the ballot, the official ballot. Now on the official ballot, if you voted no on the budget, you couldn't have a town that didn't have a budget. So the legislature in its wisdom created a floor and said, here's where the floor is. So if you don't have the proposed budget, here's the floor. I'm afraid that the budget committee is gravitating towards the fact that the default budget has significance other than the floor. And that when we do that, we actually take the New Hampshire motto of live free or die and we kind of have people choose. Are we going to live free or do we, do we die financially? So I would strongly encourage and I would ask that the Budget Committee revisit, <clears throat> a look at the standard at which it used, revisit in the session in which you're going to do is the million dollar cut too much I don't know but remove the thought about the default budget being some magic focus on what the purpose of RSA 32 was that make the budget that makes the town of Hampton work and when you fund that and you give the department heads and you give the town management the money to do the job then the people will vote for it I'm asking you to revisit that and place some of the money back. I don't have a specific number. I hope to be prepared at the deliberative session because I've got some ideas on it. But I want to thank you very much for your time. The questions were, were great that you come up with and the discussion and the debate was great. But this is something that we have to take serious because this is what makes Hampton work. And we don't want Hampton to fail in the middle of any emergency. So with that, I would ask you to reconsider that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lang. Mr. Silver. I'm going to be talking out of both sides of my mouth, so I'll start out with <laughs> what we like. The first is to add back $1,500 into the budget that you've cut for our professional fees from Mackinson and, and company. Secondly, I, on behalf of, 
my other ego, alter ego, Rational Taxpayers of Hampton as their spokesman, I want to commend you for your diligence in taking a strong stand and cutting the budget. This past year, our cost was $7.24 per thousand of assessed value. There was an analysis that had been done previously that apparently has not been a continuing item as far as we understand with the selectman that was prepared by Mr. Swolter in the past that was used as a guideline for evaluating all items that were part of the budget, including the uh, petition warrant articles and the current spending. Right now, for 2014 or 2000 and uh, excuse me 15 based upon the proposed budget our cost would go from seven dollars and twenty four cents to eight dollars and seventy six cents and I'll be very happy to leave a copy of this analysis this we'd data be that's happy coming to out. accept it May part we'd be happy to see yes that's a whopping increase Despite the fact that uh, many of the things that are desired have merit, there's a question of the affordability of these items as far as what the taxpayers can absolutely absorb and, and pay for in one time. The, this board of selectmen and prior boards of selectmen have been very diligent in keeping our tax bills reasonable and still providing services for the taxpayers and residents of Hampton. And further, we've been able to have the capital expenditures we needed with new firehouses and pump stations and new equipment for our uh, various departments that they need to operate. And yet, we keep in our taxes reasonable. Part of our job is to be, to raise consciousness about this because we represent the uh, vast majority of people are on fixed incomes, the vast majority of people really don't care. And uh, just very happy to go along with the way things are because they have confidence in what's going on. I'm very concerned about these items. $8.76, having a 19% increase or 20% increase to our taxes is unacceptable. You've taken a step, a bold step, in reducing that amount. I just cannot be very optimistic that many of these items that are on the uh, petition warrant articles are going to pass because it's a question of affordability for the taxpayers. I think there are creative ways to provide for equipment for various departments and not having everything come at one, one time but setting up capital reserves and putting money away and saving for a rainy day and then having the money available when you need it, and not having a major impact coming at one specific time. It requires planning. It requires detailed analysis and foresight. I'm very concerned with this current, uh, uh, with our default budget. What we've done is we've created what appears to us in our analysis an end run by creating uh, contractual obligations for employees that didn't have contracts before. We're raising wages 10% for a staff, an administrative staff. It, we're setting on, on our current contract with the fire department, which was greater than what we've done in the past for the other departments. We're creating an environment that people are going to claw back and want higher increases the next go round. Instead of having a fairly negotiated contract, we're becoming inconsistent with our past practices. There's, I agree, people need to have increases. There's a question of what's reasonable and when you do this and over what period of time. And not all have it all come at one time. It's a lot, for, a lot to swallow. And I um, just want to again emphasize that it takes courage to do what you've done. We appreciate it. It's not easy to do that. And uh, I commend you for your actions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Silverdick. <clears throat> is there anyone else who would like to speak to Article 12, Municipal Budget? Seeing no one, 
I will close discussion on it and I will look for a motion to move to close the public hearing, Madam Chair. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor of closing public hearing? Unanimous. And to my committee, you are not done just because we've closed this. Could we have a time? 10.27. Thank you. I can't see you from here. Would you like a motion to adjourn, Madam Chair? Uh, we won't be adjourning. We still have to vote, but public <laughs> hearing is now closed, and we thank you all for coming tonight. Now to the Budget Committee. Yes, uh, Madam okay. Chair. All right, in, in discussion here, the articles that were spoken to. Any motion to go into the meeting? Hmm. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Okay. We we'll have to resume the Budget Committee meeting? Yeah, I'll resume that thing. Yeah. Budget Committee meeting. Thank you. Do you have a motion for Michael to resume the Budget Committee meeting? No, I'll second it. And seconded by Stephen LeBranch. Unanimous. Okay, you willing to vote? Yes. All those in favor? No. Unanimous. We're resuming the budget committee meeting. Well, We've closed public hearing. Well, before I vote on it, for, for what purpose? I'm sorry? For what purpose? The budget committee can now go back and review the, the Warren articles that were spoken about tonight. Okay. All right. Anyone who was on the positive side of the vote um, on any of those Warren articles can choose to open that up for a revote. Is there any reason we, we can't do this at our next meeting? We always do it now. No time. We've always done it this okay. way. Yeah. All right. That's what I'm asking. Next time. Okay. Oh, Tuesday. We have a meeting Tuesday. Process. Madam okay. Chair. All right. So, yes. I believe I voted in favor of Article 39, and after hearing the input from the public, I would like to make a motion to reconsider Article 39. Tim, could you have gone in order? We started with 32. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. The town clock. Okay. Okay. You have a motion. Do I have a second to reopen discussion? And vote Mike for Fierce. Article Thirty-nine. Second. I did. Okay. Mike Pierce. All right. I'm going to stop down this end of the table. Joe, anything you want to add to it? All right. And I will relinquish my time to Mr. Joe. Madam Chair and my fellow Budget Committee members, the public told us that. Uh, I think the most significant point that I heard was that this was initially intended to be uh, private funded and, uh, and it encouraged us to, uh, to not support this so that we could further encourage their private funding efforts. And uh, that essential argument has caused me to no longer favor this particular article the original intent to, to do this was all a private affair, and I don't think it's uh, appropriate for the government to uh, interfere with that objective. All set. You have some no comment. I'm glad that um, that uh, Fred Rice mentioned that because I had forgotten that, and so now that I'm aware of it, um, I think that's important. Okay, and I know that I know the people that on that that have worked on the clock have done a lot of work. Okay, but you made a good point. Okay, so thank you. No questions. No questions. Okay. Moving down. No questions. Do Steve. No, no comment. I can't see that. Far. Jim, Jim, and Jim. No comment. No comment. Okay. All right, so for a re-vote on that, all those, I'm going to take another vote on that, all those in favor of this Warren article, number 39, the town clock as petitioned. Did you phrase it the other way? No, it was to, it was to recommend. It was to recommend. To recommend. Well, technically so. speaking, Madam Chair, the motion was to reconsider. Um, Technically speaking. Okay. Did I, and there was a second on that. And there was a vote. And there was a vote. So now we're at the reconsideration. Now we're, okay. now we're ready to vote on it. So now we need to vote on it. Right. So I need someone to make a motion. I'll make a motion to recommend, uh, let's see, to recommend Article 39. Mm -hmm. Okay. A second? 
Yes, I'll second that for the purposes of voting no on it. <laughs> All those in favor? Mm -hmm. In favor? This is in favor of it. This is in favor of recommending Article 39. Any more? Recommending the clock for $75,000 out of taxpayer money. Okay, wait a minute. This is to recommend, again, this is to recommend. Keep your hands up. Weapon. No one on this end of the table? Sonoy. Lawson. And Lad. So we have four yeses now. Okay. So now that vote has changed. And those who have now changed or held fast. Vote no. Vote, vote against no. it. Vote no. Okay, vote against it. Vote no. Those are all no's. Thank you, Fred. Are there any abstentions? No. No. Okay. So, so 10. 10. 4 10 0. 4 10 0. No, we listen to the public. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. 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 Yeah, I think Fred, Fred added a little bit of insight. And yes, we can remember that was all going to be from private funding. All okay, right. Moving. Let's go back to 32. 32. <coughs> Or actually, no one. We'll go back to 24. Let's start with 24. 24. Yeah, let's go right down the line. Mm. 24 was for part-time special officer training. The attempt there was to put it in the budget. But as this warrant article appears right here, we recommended it 1400. So of the 14 people sitting here, is there anyone who wants to Revote on this one, which would change it from recommend to not recommend. I can't see anybody Nothing doing that. Down anybody down here? Okay. Now moving on to Article 32. So the our right. recommendation stands on yes. Article 24. Yes. yes. On right. 24, 14 right. of us unanimously have recommended right. that right. to the public. Unanimously stands. All right. right. So now we're going to 32. 32. And be very clear. Whether it's in the budget or in a Warren article, everybody should vote positively on that. It is desperately needed no matter where it shows up. Which one's next? 32. 32. All right, now going to 32, yes. the capital reserve funds. Joan, what was the vote on that? Is that your name? 11 3. Only those who voted in favor can move to right. consider, right? Yes. So I can take no action. Of those who voted in favor, do is there anyone here who would like to put this back up for vote again? This is Article 32. Okay. Yeah, we've already recommended it. I think if we recommend it forward, then that's that's that's. Okay. No vote. All right. No action on that one. So again, moving forward to Article 38. And that vote was 8, 4, and 2 to not approve. All right. Is for those who voted not to approve, is there anyone who would like to open this up for a revote? Excuse me. No? All right. Seeing no action, we will move on. Article 40. And the last one, Article 40. The Vietnam Veterans Moving Memorial. I'd, make a, I'd like to make a motion to reconsider that vote. And I'll second vote? that. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You were going to No, no, no. Motion. That's all right. You, okay. you made the motion. I'll second a reconsideration. Okay. John, what was the vote on that? Uh, 13 four. yes and one no. No, no. It's 10 4. 10 4. 10 to oh, recommend oh, 4 no. Really? All right. Hold on one minute, because I've got something to do. Are we now voting to reconsider? Yes. One minute, one minute. I just minute. made that motion, Richard. Um, just 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 confirmation. Confirmation. Hold on. She's checking the phone. Lost, lost my place. Got it right here. Ten. Get no, that's what I want. Recommended ten. Four, four again. Ten, four. <laughs> Zero. The discussion? No, one moment. We just oh, want to make sure on the vote before we... This year. This is 38. So we want 40. 40. That was a 10-4 vote recommend. No, it was a 10-4-2 recommend. Okay. To not recommend. Yes, oh, I thought, yeah. To not 
Vietnam. It was Vietnam. It was Vietnam. 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 Vietnam.
and I find that I'm not thoroughly satisfied with this whole situation. Uh, it's very vague plan of where this would go, uh, what it would actually what it would cost initially, who is responsible for it, uh, who supports it, who is the uh, owners mm -hmm. of this memorial. So uh, again, for voting for reconsideration is the avenue that I've taken. You done? Yep. I just want to say one thing, okay? <laughs> Mr. Fred Rice, Green Beret, veteran from Vietnam, okay? Thank you. Okay? Thank you. All said. Sonny? Sonny? You have anything on this one? Okay. Brian? I will say that we did hear from Mr. Rice. Um, I, know, I will say that it is a non-profit group. I know who's in charge of it. Um, she's put a lot of work into it. Um, she wasn't available to be here tonight. She only gets one vacation a year. Um, but she has put a lot of work into this. But as far as that question goes, of the nonprofit, that I can say is true. Thank you. Yeah, I, it, 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 what bothered me was four days. I mean, you know, four days, 10,000 from 5,000, 10,000 from the Beach Commission, whatever it was, 5,000 from us. You know, I, I, I'm moving from a, a, a shaky yes to a abstain on this. I, I uh, again, there's, there's practically no impact to the taxpayer, but the fact that the money being requested is, is not inconsequential. It's, what is it, 5,000 from us, 5,000 from the Beach Commission. Others to raise money for four days, you know. It just bothers me from that point of view. So I'm going to move from a strong yes to a, or a shaky yes to an abstain on this. I, I voted in the affirmative, and I'll stay that way. Um, based on based on a couple of points, the same points I had when when I started out. Um, it's it's a partnership between the community between the beach precinct and uh, private raising of funds. It's a 65 cent uh, impact on the tax community. And for 65 cents, I think you're giving the opportunity for education, for the kids, to bring your kids down there, people who are at the beach. I think for 65 cents is a wealth of information, discussions you can have with your children. I think it's well worth the money spent. Uh, I respect Representative Rice. Uh, I respect his service to the country, his service to the state. Fred Rice is not the public. There are a lot of other people in the public. And the widow of the woman who came to speak about this, uh, this uh, memorial, her husband also served in Vietnam and also passed away in Vietnam. He was the last Marine there. So, I mean, we, when we say, you know, we sit here and say, the public, well, the public is both sides. And we had we heard from the other side of the public. So I respect uh, Representative Rice. He sat behind me in the uh, State House, and we most often voted the other way. So I'm going to vote the other way against <laughs> Representative Rice. Just a clarification. Mr. Rice is the only member of the public that spoke to us tonight that would cause us to have additional knowledge to vote uh, more in, in a more informed fashion. Just to put a clarification, the, the widow did speak to the selectman, and I'm going with that. And uh, so we've heard from both sides. I strongly support this article. I think the intent behind it is for some healing, as addressed by Mr. Rice. More importantly, at the beach will be tens of thousands of children and young adults during that time frame, none of which were born either at or before or during the Vietnam War, have no connection to it. This will simply honors all those who made the ultimate sacrifice. 
It is also as has been expressed an opportunity for this community, town and beach, to come together and do something as one. The cost is nominal. I don't believe that most survivors of Vietnam or the children of survivors of Vietnam are at this point <coughs> in our existence hostile to the wall coming or honoring their disease. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Before we vote, I want to, I waited my turn for last. I voted yes on this, and I'm going to stay as a yes on this. And I do hear you, Fred. My husband served from 1966 to 1972, prime time. All right? And I do agree with you. Our Vietnam vets were treated horribly. Yeah. Part of this memorial does include the Iraqi wars, and that's a step to give some notice for that, those soldiers in this generation. I think any time that we can expose the youth and generations that now we're getting older, you know, that was a long time ago for, for a lot of us, we can expose our young ones and the generations behind us that didn't go through the 60s and the 70s back during that time period to ask questions, to wonder what it was then in an, in an odd way I feel we are, maybe we're paying back, maybe we're giving um, the attention late, but better late than none at all. Um, so I'm not going to change my vote on this, and um, I'm not going to talk anymore either. We've gone around once, um, if I can have... Uh, I defer, but can I, make okay. one, can I make one remark? Sure. I was in the Vietnam War era, and Fred is right. I'm not, I do not support this. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. We can vote. All right, we can now vote. All those in favor of this Warren article? Just a minute. Eileen, Vlad, Waddell. Okay, you're all in favor. Is the noise going to abstain? And all those opposed? Seven, so that should be. I abstain. Seven, I can't eight, hear nine, me. It's a discussion. Twelve. Thirteen. Nine, we're all. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we need hands up again. All those. Sonny, you just say you abstain. Oh, yeah, I abstain. Oh, Sonny's abstained. So we have two abstentions. Two abstentions. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that will go on ballot. It's not recommended. Right, so it didn't pass. Okay, so this goes on the ballot as uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, yes. Seven no, two abstentions. So that I'm correct in saying this, our vote is five yes, seven no, and two abstentions. So that will go on as not recommended. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. That is Thank correct. Thank you. I just hope that all the people who said they support all this stuff, I hope we see every single person here at the 9 11 ceremony for a change. It's right here in our town, it honors veterans. It doesn't honor veterans, it honors those who died. Madam Chair, we are in a budget committee meeting here. Most of the faces on most of the boards in town never showed up. Most of the boards in town never showed up. For 9-11, Fred? I don't need to be lectured, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, we don't need to be lectured, Madam Chair. That has nothing to do with Article 40, but I will tell you. We're honoring Afghanistan for global war and terror. All right. Okay. Everybody Thank you down. very much, Fred. No one you want. All right. Going to the last article, which was the article on the budget. Oh, gee, thank you. Yes. And that would be number 12. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone on who of the nine who recommended who would Which like to open revoke? this up for a revote? I recommend it. Open it up for reconsideration. I'm sorry, you didn't. I'm sorry. The recommended budget? I don't think you did. Yes, I well, did. I, well, I voted against the 
the council right. budget. Right. So I assume that means I'm like recommending. No, the, no. Bud the, the budget that was made um, was the. Uh, I need the figure in front of me. The budget for. <laughs> the vote was to approve a budget of twenty six million three hundred seventy nine dollars. Uh, I'm sorry, three hundred seventy nine thousand and forty dollars. Your vote was against, against it. Yeah. Okay. So only those who voted for that mm -hmm. have the ability to open it up for discussion. Anybody in the in the positive that wants to open that up? Not down here. All right. Last call on that one. Seeing none. That is closed for discussion. Do I have a motion, motion to adjourn? adjourn? I have a motion to adjourn, Madam Can I have the time, please? I don't know what time it is. Uh, I make a motion at 10.51. Okay, at 10.51, we, wait a minute, we need a second, Mike, and then second. we need... Second. And then we have a meeting Tuesday night. So don't go. Don't run away. Yeah, we can. It's on the clock. We All those just just telling you. For we don't leave because we have to sign the MS form. Okay. So Madam Chair, are we meeting on Tuesday night? Yes, yes. we are meeting Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Select. Perfect. Select.